Hey, looks like uh, Jody, it's you and me. <laughs> How you doing? For anybody else that might be watching and not showing up on my uh, on my radar here, uh, you know, I had to think twice about um, doing this on a Sunday afternoon during football season, but uh, you know. There's only so much time and uh, I got some building to do. So I figured, hey, I'll just do it. And anybody that wanted to, uh, anybody wanted to come along can come along. I know sometimes these things are uh, like watching paint dry, but uh, hopefully on the replay, uh, people will watch it and uh, maybe uh, get some questions answered that, uh, that they might have about building some of these quads. So uh, got my, in the spirit of Halloween here, I decided that uh, Franken quad, I've heard that term before, is a very appropriate name for a drone that uh, is just uh, going to be built out of a bunch of stuff laying around and uh, analog cameras and VTXs and uh, an old frame um, stuff, some stuff that, uh, that I've rebuilt and some stuff that... Uh, is just left over from the conversions to the uh, to the new DJI FPV system. So uh, we'll see we'll see what happens. Uh, now it says that that I'm the only one watching, so I'm going to hope that that's wrong. And if anybody else is here, let me know that you're here. Uh, put a uh, put a message in the chat. That'd be nice. And uh, I'm going to put a link to the panel if you guys anybody would like to uh, like to come in here and join me okay Joe you're still here <laughs> good anyway here's a link should anybody want to come in and talk or hang out while I do this uh, that uh, that would be great and I see that the uh, viewer count is starting to climb so uh, whoever's here welcome glad you could make it and as you can see, I have a Halloween uh, background here, and I, I use that graphic in the thumbnail for this video, which uh, I enjoy doing graphics. So I thought that would be uh, that would be uh, pretty neat. Anyway, um, until somebody comes in here to talk to me, let's just uh, head on over to the uh, to the workbench, and let me show you what uh, what I'm going to be doing, and I'm going to. Uh, I wish you had a microscope so we could see real close. <laughs> oh man, Jody, you're just you're just gonna push me into buying one of those things, aren't you? <laughs> uh, I'm hoping that the audio is uh, is a good level here, and you can all uh, you can all hear that and uh, my sound effects should be a good level too. So I hope that's working out. And uh, as you can see. No headphones today, no earphones. Uh, I do have just a small little Bluetooth speaker, which I'm hoping isn't providing any echoes or uh, or bad audio traits to this thing. And uh, I have a uh, I have a little uh, lav mic, wireless mic, so I can get up and move around and shuffle around, and uh, I look less like a broadcaster and more like a a, a workman. Uh, Arctic drone, how you doing? Good greetings from the north. Yeah, I understand it's starting to get a little colder up there. Uh, down here, we had, uh, it was in the upper 60s this morning, just about 70, but uh, went out for a walk and it really felt good. I'll tell you, really felt good. Uh, Ken, Ken, how you doing? Ken Cardoso is in the house. How you doing? Thanks for stopping by uh, and selecting the old guy as your entertainment choice for a little while. 
hard take drug, Norway. Oh my God. Hey, good. We're, we're international now. So anyway, we're going to go over here to the build table and, uh, let's, uh, let me show you what I'm, what I'm going to be doing here. And I'm going to try to zoom in here a little bit and try to keep it, keep it all in the center. But this thing here is, uh, remember I built that Tyro 99 and, um, decided that, uh, that I was, uh, going to uh, take all the guts out of it. And I put it in that, uh, that new frame and did a build with a GPS and all the, all the toys on it and called it, uh, as suggested by Jody Drone Shots, the Mitch 5000. Well, I ended up with this little frame left over. One of the reasons I really didn't like this frame was because it's very small. There's just no room for anything in it. In fact, you can't even put the VTX in, in the, uh, in the area here where the, uh, where the stack goes, because, um, there's not enough room. So you, you have to actually clamp the VTX down here to this, uh, to this top plate. And then certainly there was no room for a lost drone finder or any other good stuff. But one of the benefits of this frame is it's very light, very small, and, uh, it's just been sitting there. Then when I built that, um, when I built that, uh, rebuilt the uh, Armiton Marmot the other day. I had these, uh, these Emacs, um, eco, eco motors on it. And, uh, I decided to replace them with a upscale type Zing motor. And that, uh, so then I had four of these motors left. So I figured, well, I got motors, got a frame. I got, a CADX Rattel, which is one of the, the best, best little cameras that, um, most of the reviewers really like them, really like them. And, uh, so I got one of those. I have an RXSR receiver that I pulled out of a quad when I replaced it with the R9 long range. So that's a receiver with telemetry. So got one of those. I have a, uh, a little HGLC um, VTX, which is a tiny little thing. And uh, I'll probably end up maybe shrink wrapping it, maybe not, but mounting it right, right up top here and just tie wrapping it on. So it'll be out there in the breeze, get nice and cool. And that's where the VTX had to go. Um, on the original one and the receiver went, uh, went right underneath of this little plate. So we've got the VTX and uh, a while back I had bought a few of these, uh, cause they were on sale. I bought a few of these, uh, Mamba F four Oh fives, the F four diatone Mamba flight controllers. And, uh, this one's never been used. So we're going to set that all up today, but this, uh, had this, had the flight stack for it. And that's uh, brand new. Nice little, nice little flight stack. And these things, I think I paid about 40 bucks for this whole thing. I mean, when you can buy a, a stack with a ESC, a good one, nice, reliable one that everybody's using. Uh, uh, and uh, for 40 bucks, that's, uh, that, that's quite a deal. And uh, it comes with... Uh, it comes in this little this little box here with uh, an XT60 connector, a capacitor, and a short little short little lead. But I have this uh, I have this pigtail here that uh, even though it's a little heavier, I might use. I have a whole bag full of these things, and maybe I'll use that instead of soldering up this this XT60. So we've got the uh, we've got the controller here, and then uh, another thing left over from this build. Of course, there was this little bottom plate that uh, acts like landing gear and goes underneath the battery on, on the bottom of this frame. And uh, so we're going to use that and find a battery strap that, that fits. So that, uh, I think, is, uh, is, is the pieces and the parts. And let's see. Kev FPV. Hey, how you doing? Wow, skip right on by. <laughs> Hey, all Northern Maine. Hey, welcome, my friend. 
thanks for stopping by. And uh, on my uh, chat here, you're the only one that is, doesn't have a wrench. And that's how I, I tell if somebody's been into my stream for the first time. So let me go ahead and, and give you that blue wrench and, and welcome you. And that means if you'd like, you can certainly uh, post a link or something. Uh, and, and I just trust the crowd of guys that's interested in me or decent people and they're not trolls. They're not going to create any kind of, any kind of havoc anyway. So those are the pieces and parts that, uh, that I'm going to be using. And I just wanted to take a quick look at the chat and see, uh, catch up with that. So with that, let's go back over here. Uh, and, um, zoom out on this thing here and let's, let's get started. So the first thing I think would be to, uh, I don't know if, if, um, if this view here might be better for watching, watching this kind of stuff, but, uh, let me do that for a while. Let's start by just taking, uh, taking this, um, cage off the frame here and we'll get right on down to, to the basics. And then I, I already mounted the motors because that's kind of boring. And I did that beforehand because I didn't think that, uh, that was riveting television screwing in motors. So they're all, they're all mounted on here. So let's, uh, let's take this frame off this, uh, this little bugger right here. Set that aside for right now. So what we've got here, and I'm going to take the lid from the, uh, from the flight controller, which makes a great little, little tray for screws. So the first thing I think I want to do is I want to uh, take this flight controller and it's something that I think is a good idea to do with, with any new flight controller. And that is to uh, go ahead and, and actually plug it into the computer, fire up Betaflight, decide if I, if I want to upgrade the firmware, I want to see what version of the firmware Betaflight this comes with, decide if I, if I really want to upgrade it. I thought that uh, this drone might be a good test bed for uh, 4.1, but I, I'm, I'm trying to learn everything I can about 4.1 and they still haven't released the uh, final ready for prime time version yet. They've, they've released some release candidates, which should be pretty close, but I think uh, I might hold off on that. So I think for the time being, I'm just going to leave this flight controller um, and run it with it. It's going to have 3.5 points something on it. I'm pretty sure. So let's, uh, let's just plug this thing in to, to the computer. And it's uh, it's blinking. It's got some nice little blinkies on it that are see it blinking away there. That hasn't blown up. No smoke yet. So we'll go over here and we will open up Beta Flight and come over here to Beta Flight and. Let's connect to the, what the hell? That's weird. I clicked on connect and nothing happens. Oh, okay. You are using an outdated version of the Betaflight configurator. Version 10.6 is available online. Please visit the release page to download and install the latest versions with fix and improvements. Please close. Uh, I already have 10.6 installed on another computer. Uh, I don't want to particularly do that now, and I don't need to do that unless uh, I'm going to use uh, Betaflight 4.1. Betaflight 4.1 is uh, basically the uh, requires the 10.6 uh, version of the configurator. But for the time being, we're going to use uh, we're going to use this one. So what I want to do over here is I want to take, pick up the flight controller and move it around and make sure 
that everything is working correctly. So let's see where that front arrow is. It's this way. So when I tilt it to the front, is that right? Let's get it around here so I can see it. There's the, there's the front. And this should be front. That should be back. Twist, twist, yaw, yaw. Okay. So shows me that the, uh, the gyro is working in there. And uh, what we're going to do is see what version we have. It says here that I have version 3.5.1. So I think I'm going to flash that to 3.5.7, which is the latest version of uh, 3.5. But before I do that, I want to see uh, how the ports are set up on this thing as it comes from the factory. Uh, it basically just shows me that I have a receiver, a serial RX in UART 1. UART 3 and 6 are free, but I don't see any telemetry or anything enabled on those two, so I don't need to worry about that. The configuration, it's got D-Shot 600, 8K and 2K on the loop frequencies, normal motor direction, uh, four and a half on the motor idle up. Okay, we'll set all that up. And uh, PIDs are just standard, standard PIDs, no receiver yet. Only thing they, that it comes set up with is the arm switch, it looks like, no mode switches or anything. Um, motors, OSD, just says warnings is about the only one in there. Uh, LED strip sensors, um, CLI. Uh, well, that that looks uh, that looks pretty standard. So they really haven't they really haven't done much much to this controller. So what we're going to do is, uh, whoa, let me take look who's here, Mars. Hey, Mars, how are you? Good to see you. You uh, I put a link up there in the. Uh, Put a link if you'd like to. I know you always like to jump on. Love to have you, Mars. So if you want to, come on in on StreamYards and uh, you do this kind of stuff. So you can uh, you can help me out and make sure I'm doing everything right. So what I think I'm going to do, I could flash this to 4.06, um, which is the version right before the 4.1. Uh, I hope I'm not boring you all with these numbers, but let's just go take a look at the firmware on this thing. Um, this is a Fury F4 board, I'm pretty sure. In fact, just to make sure, I'm going to reconnect to this thing and see uh, what, what we got on here. So I type version. And I have the Fury F40 SD 3.5.1 from September 8th, which... 2018. So that's, <laughs> that means that this light controller was made quite a while ago and it's been sitting in the box. So the Fury is, is the correct one. So let's go back here to, uh, to the update. And it shows me here that the uh, 4.06 is the latest release version of that. Although I could do 3.5.7 if I wanted to stay. But I think if I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and do it. Nothing's set up already. I may as well just go to 4.06. And once I'm, once they release, actually release 4.1, since this is going to be my test and beater banger quad with nothing fancy, just basic analog stuff to go out there and, and lose it in the canal or whatever I want to do with it. Uh, I think this might be a great candidate to load the, the newest 4.1 on it and, uh, and see how that is. But I think I'm going to flash it to 4.06. So let's select 4.06 and let's select a full chip erase. Now, what I need to do is I need to unplug the controller. I need to unplug the controller here and I need to find the boot button on the, uh, on the controller, which is right over here, a little button on the side and hold it in while I plug the controller back in. And that puts the 
controller in what they call DFU mode. And uh, DFU mode, um, DFU mode means device firmware upgrade or update. And uh, if you if if you know, if you're if you've done that correctly and you look up here up in the corner where where you see the mouse, you'll see that instead of showing a COM port, it'll show DFU. That means that the uh, Betaflight has recognized that it that it's in the proper mode to flash the firmware. I've selected the correct flight controller, which is Fury 4DSD. Now, if I wanted to go to 4.1, there's a button up here that says Show Unstable Releases. If I did that. Uh, and I say, show me release and release candidates, you can see that there is a version of 4.1.0 release candidate six from, that's been out for quite a while, but I think that's the, that's the latest release candidate for 4.1, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to go to the, to the, uh, last, what they call stable release that they, that they put in there. And that's 4.06. Uh, I want to do a full chip erase down here at the bottom is a button that says load the firmware. So this is going to load the firmware into Betaflight from the internet. Now I have the firmware loaded and let me make sure it's the right target. It's the right version. And that's from August of 2019. So that's fairly recent. Uh, all the, all this, uh, text that tells you how you're going to screw up if you do this. I'm going to ignore all that and a bunch of warnings here uh, and all that other stuff. And I'm going to hit flash firmware. So the first thing it says down here is erasing. And now it's just wiping it out. So let's just hope that this works, uh, works correctly. Farm wealth and I, Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Uh, let me go ahead and give you a blue wrench so you can be like everybody else while this firmware is flashing. There we go. How are we doing? It's flashing now. You can see down here the, uh, the progress. Oh, here he is. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to stick you over there on the side and keep you small, Carlos. That's not a problem. I'll be watching your chat. I don't want to leave you hanging. Nobody else yeah, joined you here. Not yet, but it's early. You know, these things last, these things go on forever. So, uh, especially, I mean, if I was, if I was building the thing myself with nobody watching and didn't, and didn't actually feel like I was trying to be somewhat educational. And again, I, I always, ha I have, I have my disclaimers. I haven't, I haven't done the disclaimers yet. Uh oh. Offer no purchase necessary. Offer valid at participating locations. Void where prohibited. No animals were harmed during the production of this soundboard. Subject to change without notice. Side effects include dry mouth, occasional pig snorter, two sore stomach, teary eyes, achy jaws, and whatever tingles well. Laughing heart. <laughs> and uh, it's official. That's official. And then my disclaimer, which <coughs> is, um, I consider myself an expert in beta flight because I'm one week ahead of you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Or the other person, much more than me. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you know that. You know that. And, and there are guys that come in here and watch who, who, when I compare what I know about this stuff to them, I have got a lot to learn. So, uh, I do the best I can, and and I work real hard to to learn all the little intricacies of of these things because it fascinates me. Not because I I I, I do enjoy it. I mean, it's I, otherwise I I wouldn't do it. But I'm 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 an old computer programmer and um, I'm fascinated by uh, how all this stuff works. And gotcha. I take time to dig into some of the different meanings of all the different things in beta flight and uh, the whys of the PID tuning and uh, rates and filters and all that stuff. And I'm learning, but there's a, there's a lot, there's just so much to learn, but to set up a basic quad, I've got most of that pretty well covered. So I would think so. Did, yeah. Did you see Barry uh, G hey, Barry. Okay. What's that? You saw Barry G. Yeah. See, hey Barry, how you doing? Okay. Yeah, he had he, he had uh, put a message in here a little earlier that uh, that he uh, he was going to be popping in and out. So anyway, welcome. Well, it appears that my 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 firmware is flashed successfully. So let's connect to the board because it rebooted, and still works. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, now what I'm going to do, like I did the last time, is 
go through it, the different the different tabs on the side here and set up. Wait, did you put it together already? No, no. I always, oh, okay. I always, uh, uh, I always like to uh, flash the board when oh, it okay. comes right. This is a new a new controller. When uh, they had had a sale on these things, and I, I think I bought three or four of them when they were What's on the sale. Mamba? Yeah, it's the Mamba F4, which is a good reliable board. It's a, you know, uh, and uh, for that kind of money, which is less oh, than half of what some of these other boards cost, they work great. And I think the well, you know, uses them. What's that? $40 I didn't understand you. $40 you got very quiet all of a sudden. $40 now I can't hear you at all. Interesting. There you go. Now I hear you. Oh, okay. All right. Was it over 40? Is, is, are they roughly like 40, 40, They're 40 yeah, 44, $45. I think I got them for just about 40 bucks a piece. And that includes the ESC. So, uh, it's a good deal for, you know, for a basic yeah. flight controller. Uh, I, I even, uh, that, that conversion that I did, uh, no, no, no. On the, uh, on the Marmot, I had the uh, Kakuta F7 in there, which was the single most expensive flight controller I ever bought. I thought it deserved to have the, uh, the FPV system in it. So. Gotcha. All right. So let's take a look at what we have here. Um, we have, uh, ports and it, I still have UART one as a receiver. I have nothing on UART three and nothing on UART six. Now this receiver I'm putting in this thing is a, a free sky RSXR, which is not a long range receiver, but it does have telemetry. So one of these UARTs is going to be used for telemetry. And the other UART is going to be used for smart audio. And I'm assuming everybody knows what smart audio is. Um, so telemetry, let's break down telemetry, is the uh, voltage and things like that, RSSI? Yeah, telemetry is every everything that uh, uh, current draw. Right, um, okay. um, All of these things that there's, there's usually when you – go into the radio and say, discover sensors, it, it ends up pulling in usually 12 or 13 different mm -hmm. uh, readings. If you have a GPS in the system, it adds another six or eight readings. Is black box you, one of those also with the telemetry? What's that? Black box. Uh, black box is, is different than the receiver telemetry. Black box oh, just re it records all that stuff and, it, and the black box records all of the uh, uh, things going on with the gyros and, and and everything, letting you find where the noise is for your filters and, and all that kind of stuff. And and I understand the basics of black box. However, I haven't uh, utilized. I haven't started to play with it yet because in order to play with it, you really got to know what all this stuff means. There's a guy called UAV Tech. If you've ever watched his channel. He is probably one of the uh, most knowledgeable because he he's almost a like a beta flight dev you know he's like one of the beta flight guys uh and uav tech is the name of his channel and i go to him and joshua bardwell mm -hmm. when i want to when i like joshua says when i want to learn something gotcha. and these guys are both very very technical and they both understand uh they both understand the the ins and outs of it so um, I think that, uh, I, I, I watch, especially the UAV tech guy. I mean, he gets really down deep, deep. I mean, deep, you got to really, really start with the basics to build up to where you can even understand what he's talking about on some of his later videos. Fortunately, he has a lot of playlists that take you from the beginning of like in, in beta flight 4.1, they've got a feature called RPM filtering. Hmm which is brand new and very few people actually understand what that is. Well, I'm beginning to learn what that is. So when I use 4.1, I'll be able to take advantage of it. And let's welcome from down under where it's more than likely either incredibly early in the morning or incredibly late at night. <laughs> I'm going to guess uh, 4.30 in the morning. Mr. Mars. 
FBE drones. <laughs> there you go, Carlos. Mitch. Morning, morning. Hey, Mars, how you doing, morning, buddy? Morning, morning, morning. What time? Uh, uh, it's five thirty in the morning. Are you up? Are, have you are you up or or haven't yeah, you gone no. to bed yet? No, I went. I went to bed about six thirty last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Okay, well, good. So, You're uh, um, twenty six hour day for me. <laughs> uh, wow! Good. Well, good to see you, man. Thanks yeah. for thanks for thanks for coming in. And uh, uh, now, now, when I have a real deep technical question, I know that I got some some serious help here. See? Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe I don't know. I can Google it for you. Uh, <laughs> That's the way. Okay, let's see how I get you out of this. There we go. All right. So at any rate, what I was what I was saying, we're back here to the beta flight page. Uarts. Uarts. Uh, Uart one is the receiver. Serial yeah. RX it says up there, and that's and I want that. Can you? Uh, can you? Uh, can uh, you here's a first statement? for you. What's that? Here's a first for you. What's what that? Ah, spectacles. Oh. <laughs> all, all the same. Yeah, I got them now too. Yeah. All, all right. right. Mitch, real quick. I'm yeah. sorry. Can you break down UART? UART is a tab? UART a, is a serial port. A serial port. And a serial port is used for? Serial communications, just like a USB port is on a computer. Uh, yeah. all right. yeah. one, In other words, two. it's just a way to send and receive data from the processor. And, uh, and is there any? Any you are anything on the flight controller? Like, what is this you are talking to? The well, that's where you set it up. And it's going to communicate with what? Okay. Well, I have two free UARTs, three and six. One of them is going to be my smart audio. It's going to communicate with the VTX. The other is going to be the telemetry that's going to my receiver. So it can be sent back to my transmitter. So if I want to have the transmitter tell me, your voltage is 14.2 volts. Time to come in. I can I can set up the logical switches and that in, in the, the Tyrannus to talk to me and tell me based on data coming from I can say if the if the voltage is below 1400, then read the voltage. So if okay. if if I do a punch out and the voltage drops, she'll come on and say, Your voltage is 13.7, you know, whatever. And uh that's especially handy with the DJI setup because uh, you don't have that information in your goggles. Whereas with the, with the analog, you have the USB, which you can put all of this information. You don't really need telemetry with an analog system, but right. it's nice to have uh, so you can concentrate on your flying and maybe set up a low RSSI warning or a low battery voltage warning. Right. Where you get an audible. You get an audible alert. Uh, Indigo Rhino, hello, how are you? Welcome in. So what I'm going to do is now what I need to do is, is and, I, and, I, and I don't really remember the specs on this HGLC is I got to go over here to, um, I got to go over here, I'm gonna move this in here for right now. And I'm going to see if I can't find out what the specs are on the smart audio. Is this an IRC tramp? Is it Smart Audio 1.0, 2.0, 2.1? Because I need, I, 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 I should know that. Uh, not necessarily the version of Smart Audio, which you do need to know for the newest beta flight, but you don't for, for the 4.06 that I just flashed. Uh, but I need to find out if it's tramp. And I'm, I'm looking at this, uh, at the thing, and I don't have the instructions for it here. So this, but I do have the thing what it is. It is an HGL RC uh, XJB XJB TX20 TX20 and let's see what we got here here it is it comes from Banggood Amazon mini version 2 uh, this is what I want right here so let's see if it tells me about it that is what I have here right there. So let's see if it tell, if it tells me what it is. Does it say smart audio here? Subscribe now. No, I don't want to subscribe now. Stop showing me. I, I read something. I can't remember what it was, but it was something about HG LRC, something bad. Well, I don't know if, if it was a certain board or, or a quad or oh, well, man. they're a big, they're a big, uh, they're a big uh, company and they have they have a lot of, uh, uh, I read some good reviews on this thing. 
Yeah. But, but interestingly enough, I'm looking here uh, on their site and I don't see any reference to whether it's yeah. now I'm not saying it's that board I'm saying I heard or I read something somewhere I watched a video and there was someone saying something about HGLRC something yeah well right. you know they're like uh, they're like um I'm not sure yep RC they make tons of different yeah. Some yeah, probably yeah. good some probably bad but yeah, well, uh, I mean, you probably um that's not help the, if, that's not probably, the immediate yeah. answer there so what no, I if i was do, more specific it would be better must have been a quad must have been a quad or something someone's so, complaining it's no good or something i'm not me, sure uh, how about if you say specs well that's what what i was going to say is uh i'm going to type smart audio in here I mean, the only thing is, it doesn't matter if I said it wrong I, and it doesn't work. I go back. Hey, here it is. HGLC manual. Huh. Okay. There we go. That's the whole stack. But that's not what a specs. Let's see. There's the control board. There's the thing. Here's where's the VTX. The VTX. Uh, pit mode, control mode. It just doesn't say anything about smart, smart audio here. Well, that's uh, that's not what I want either then. Um, but you know, it has it. Well, I've got four wires. I, I was, it, it, where I was using it before I had the green wire on there for smart audio. So yeah, okay. it, it, uh, it does have it. It does have it. It says, uh, the green wire. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Maybe indigo, indigo rhino and silver top fly are in chat too. Yeah, it's got uh, OSD RX. It says it on it. Yeah, it says right on the board. So that's that's so the pin. That, that's the pin that goes to smart, that's audio. smart audio. Yeah. Uh, so help HGLRC. Here's an RC group. So let's see. Uh, I'm trying to figure out why my screws. Keep... <laughs> it's it's not smart it is using the tramp protocol hey found the answer okay there you go so we're using tramp so what i'm going to do on uart3 now what is that even over mean? here when i go over here to peripheral peripherals i mean uh yeah peripherals yeah. And I'm gonna select vtx irc tramp so that'll be for uart3 and then for uart6 i'm going to go over here to telemetry and i'm going to select smart port which is the protocol of the telemetry that the uh, free sky receivers use and i'm going to save and reboot those settings right. so uh basically that's 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 all i need to uh that's all i need to worry about there and let me go back oh what's wrong i, I maybe i should just get i think i screwed up my serial connection so let me unplug this and plug it back in again. You know, one of the problems I have here when I'm doing these live streams is I've got so many different serial things. I got cameras and microphones and soundboards. And, yeah. and when I when I keep plugging in, when I keep plugging in the, uh, when I keep plugging in the, uh, the quad, the quad, it uh, uh, sometimes connects and sometimes doesn't. Here it is. Okay, so we're connected. And let's go back and see if it saved the ports. And it did. VTX is uh, tramp, smart port for telemetry. The next configuration tab. Uh, it is, this is correct. It is props in. Uh, it is D shot 600. What does that mean? That's the, the ESC protocol, one of the standard ESC protocols. I, I, I yeah. can't. I understand it. I can't get into it. It would take me all day to try to explain it. Uh, all right. All, this all is I really know good. is D-Shot. If you got D-Shot, you can put tunes on your ESCs like I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. You can program your, Basically. You can program your, your, uh, your ESC. Yeah. Uh, the next thing we go down here, and uh, it's is it 8K and 2K, which is fine. I could change this to 8K uh, for the PID loop frequency, but I found that 2 Two well, sometimes they're the same, aren't they, Mitch? Sometimes, yeah, but it seems yeah. like when you I'm load noticed. when you load a default version of the fir firmware Mars, yeah. uh, you end up getting um, you always seem to get the eight and the two. Now, interestingly okay. enough, 
when 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 what I've learned about the new 4.1 beta flight yeah. is that it with RPM filtering, uh, y- you set you set it to D shot 300, and you set the uh, frequencies both the gyro the accelerometer I mean the gyro frequency and the PID loop frequency to 4K. Oh, okay. Uh, because yeah, I suppose it, there's it, all different ones, isn't there? Because you're you're doing a with with the new uh, RPM filtering, you're doing bi-directional communication with each of the EFs, ESCs, you know, thousands of times a second, uh, to create these filters on the fly, and uh, by slowing it down a little, doesn't it certainly doesn't affect the performance, but it goes a little easier, especially on an F4 processor. Maybe with an F7 processor, you could keep it at D shot 600 and the uh, higher frequency, but that's that's going to be okay. Um, am I am I correct in assuming D shot can be used as a buzzer? Yeah, D shot is also what controls, and you'll see the set. We'll get to the settings of that down a little bit, a little okay. bit lower. Um, that just that they call it D shot beacon because it uses uh, the communication with the flight controllers to send a high frequency signal to the motors. And the motors change direction a couple thousand times a second, and that's what you hear. You hear that, uh, that beeping sound. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave these set the way it is. This this quad is going to be called the F R A N K E N Q U A D Rankin quad. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go over over here and. I'm not going to fool with that. I am going to change the arming angle to 180 degrees. That's something that you should always do. Otherwise, yeah. you might get it stuck in a tree upside down and not be able to arm it. Right. You wiggle it out. Put it into or, or get it into uh, turtle mode to flip it over. So we want to do that. Not worried about the camera. Hey, Mitch, did you know you could get better flight on your phone? Yes, I have it. The Speedy B app. That's yeah. it. I'm just... I've actually used it out in the field. You, you plug have it you? Up right into the quad oh, cool. i got a special cable with a usb c on one end and a yeah. usb micro on the other plug it right into the yeah. quad go right into oh. into speedy b and oh, it, that's it, mad. it's and er, all of these settings you can do it really yeah. i mean it's frigging unbelievable one thing I, th- I don't i don't actually like it on the phone but I like it on the tablet that I've got. The tablet's sick. Yeah, well, it says... Phone's a bit too small. Training, but there's the, there's the, the little it. DB app. That's, yep. that's it's, the one. It's, it's it's a free app, and it's incredible. And it'll actually yeah. it'll actually let you uh, go out, go into that thing, and... Uh, it's probably better on the phone than on our computer. The field, which, to <laughs> me, just by using your cell phone is tremendous. I went on to Amazon. I, I bought a couple of these these cables well look that one good thing like that you've always got you know your mobile phone or cell phone on you or, or your tablet with your sort of more you know every time yep. i go out anywhere i always got yep, to remember really, to pack my laptop if, and, from, if you're going out for like a long yeah. day of flying and you got your all your batteries and your chargers and your and your uh, uh portable soldering iron and you're ready to rebuild the whole quad in the field it's really handy yeah, not to have to drag with you, you know? yeah. Yeah, <laughs> all I, right, do, so, I like it on this, the tablet so this is Tramp, and moving on down here, we've got uh, S bus protocol on a serial based receiver. Now, other features don't need in flight, don't need servo tilt. Not using soft serial on this. Don't have. So we're looking at your Halloween in the background, just so you know. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. There we go. Okay, so now we're. That's why I need you guys here. I'm here. So uh, <laughs> we we are going to have telemetry. No yes. LED strip. Uh, air no, mode, like... I I usually set so it comes on in. Uh, I don't like it on all the time because if you're flying in, in in sometimes if you're flying in in angle mode for some reason I don't normally do that but you can't it, it won't it won't let you land the thing just keeps bouncing around all over the place so I turn that off OSD oh, okay. OSD is on yeah anti gravity and dynamic filter yeah. always turn them on. Uh, I don't need the 3D ESC motor features because I don't plan to fly 3D where I can fly upside down. No, no GPS in this one. Here's where you turn on the beacon. So they're on. Yep. Lost. That means a fail safe. And if you hit the RX set, means if you hit a control or a switch on your transmitter. 
Yep, I've got mine set to the bottom right switch, the one with the spring on it that returns. That's yeah, that's pretty standard. The, the moment. Yes, yeah, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. And then I do turn off the uh, beeper <coughs> on the USB so that it doesn't beep, but I leave all the other beepers on. So I right. think that's everything in the configuration tab. Save and reset, yeah. and then we'll go down here. Let's see. So that's there. Now, I, I, why do I have to disconnect every time I save and reset? I think that that's uh, yeah, that, it happens. That, that might be, uh, there we go. It might be something to do with the fact that I just have so much plugged into this. Power and battery. Uh, I leave them set the way they are. 3.3 minimum, 3.5 warning. I want, I don't want to, I don't want to kill my batteries. I want to, uh, I want to keep them. Uh, yeah. Keep them right. Yeah. Fail well, safe well, on this one is just going to be drop. I don't have a GPS in it. Yeah, no, quick. Like tuning, I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to start out with all the stock PIDs and rates. Receiver and modes we'll get to after we get the receiver hooked up. Uh, the motors tab, I, I, I go back to that after we get the motors soldered up to the ESC. The o OSD, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that when we're done and have everything work in sensors, uh, logging and black box CLI. So that's everything I really need to do. You have to say that again? No? Okay. In beta flight right now. For now, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so that, uh, and I'm going to unplug the, uh, unplug the controller from the, uh, from the thing. And the next step is going to be mount the stack, solder up the uh, motors to the, uh, ESC board and, um, check the motor direction. So let's, uh, let's get to that. So let's go back over to here. There we go. Well, I just realize you can see the chat on this whole thing. Oh, oh on on what? On StreamYard. I oh, know you that. watch it. Yeah, you can. You, 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 I guess you can see the chat. Is it actually working? Yeah, live comments. Oh, okay, cool. Cool. How many people we got in here? Let's see. Nine. Holy mackerel! I see 10. eleven. Eleven. Wow. 11. Oh, who else came in that we don't know about? Silver top flyer. Hey, how you doing? And a uh, farmo. I gave you a. I made you a moderator, but I don't think you've said anything since, so I don't know if that works. Kev FPV made him a moderator, I think, already. Uh, yes, and uh, Silver Top Flyer, how you doing, man? Let me make you a moderator, too, so you you don't stand out like a sore thumb among the sea of blue that we have around here. There you go. You are now. You see Kev FPV? Why don't I see him? What's that? Yeah. No, nah, he was he was right up the top. Oh. Basically, when I first just before I went to make a coffee. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh yeah, now I see. I, I don't know if he's there or not anymore. I've got no idea. All see. right, the first thing I got to do, of course, is take the flight yeah. stack apart. So we're gonna un unplug I mean, the uh, unplug the little wire here. Take the screws off so that I can take the controller off of the. Uh, Take the controller off the top of the is that can you see okay what i'm doing here yes yeah. okay i so want one of them blue mats <laughs> it's like, yeah they're on amazon they're like 10 yeah. bucks but they're yeah, silicone. they're silicone and they're tremendous you can't burn them with a soldering iron you know i, I mean, just got a i don't know if you can sort of see it there in the corner a little bit more gray cutting mat so i'm happy with that because all i got is just a piece of um mdf board Probably about a meter long by half a meter, and then everything sort of centralized on that. If I do my soldering and all, all that kind of stuff, but I like because that's magnetized that board too, isn't it, uh, Mitch? What's that? That's magnetized. What's magnetized? That blue. Your mat. I don't Your think mat. so. I don't think so. It's it's Is pure. That... It's pure silicone rubber. Oh, oh, sorry. It must be a different one. I've seen. Yeah, Chris, no. This is Chris just... has got one, I think. No, yeah, this is just here. You don't have the little holes for the tools or the little things like no, that. No, that's a different mat, isn't it, Carlos? Sorry, I thought yeah. it was the same mat. Sorry. Now, this thing is also, the I use Similar. these things, and, and, and they give you this little foil here, which has uh, a couple of solder tabs on it, and it's, it's not conductive. It's coated, but except where the solder tabs are around the edge, and uh, it's a shield, and it goes between... Mm -hmm the ESC and the flight controller. And I don't know if everybody uses these things or not, but they give them what to would, you. What would you solder to that? Well, you solder a little wire to it 
and then you hook it to the gr to a ground connection somewhere on the system. Okay. Yeah. So I figure, you know, I always use it. I figure it can't hurt anything that well, takes that 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 reduces noise is yes is fine with me. So now yeah. we got the uh, now we got the uh, the stack, and at this point, oh man, it's decision time since this thing is a, a exactly next no front no back yet. We need to pick a back and pick a front. So here we go. Flip a coin. This is the, this is now officially the back right there there's room under the board for a battery strap yep okay so that that goes like this the back is going to be where the pigtail goes and uh, now i just need to come up with four screws to mount To mount the controller. So I think this size will work. Uh, no, it won't. Because I got I got all this, I got three layers of carbon to go through. So I'm going to need some long, you some longer. I've got to, I've got to buy I, screws for me. Um, but I, but I don't want to, I don't want to. Uh, the warrior queen is saying goodbye. Oh, I didn't even know she was here. Yep. Okay. He's going to go fight. The bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I found two button head long screws here, and I want to use button heads because the battery goes down here, and I don't want the big screw sticking out to dent the battery. I have to put some little rubber silicone pad down there to level out the bottom. So I need to find. Get the bad I, guys. I have two of these long screws here, but uh, I don't think I have four of them. Well, hey, Mitch, just, can you just pass me a screw for my prop? I'm missing a screw. Yeah, yeah what do you need? <laughs> you got it. I've got no freaking idea. <laughs> you know, only, you know, oh, there's three. It's a little That's bloody three. one. <laughs> there's got to be four of these things in here. <laughs> I mean, for God's sakes. For, yeah. As Mikey would say, for the love of God, there has to be for the love four of God. For the love no, of God. It's, it's good, though, to have, like, like what you've got, a container, and you don't just buy one pack of screws, buy, like, 20 of them, because you will need them. Well, I've got I've got all these I, I I have all these assortments here. See them? Yeah, that's what I've got to do. This one here has everything in it, but they're not button head; they're the cap head screws. So mm -hmm. I I have the right size screw, but but I don't have the uh, I don't have the button. And uh, let me see if that's going to be long enough. So let's put that in here. See how much of it sticks up. Yeah, enough to get into the to the plastic there. I think, yeah, not a tremendous amount, but enough to certainly hold the flight controller in place. But I do need one more long button head screw. So somewhere around here, I got to have one. But meanwhile, I'll put the other ones in. I'm going to try to stay as long as possible, Mitch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the yard work kicked my butt. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> um, you're yeah. the one that's getting old. The rest of us are all getting young, right? <laughs> well, something like that, I guess. I don't know, but I, I'm feeling it. <laughs> well, I'm my yard work days are, are over. I understand. Uh come on, give me one just one more somewhere in this you don't, have, you don't have another place where you keep some extras? Well, round. this is the this is the bin where I just generally throw the uh, okay. the surplus screws. You know what I mean? And uh, the rest of these are all in are all in the uh, in the thing that they came with. For right now, I'm just I mean I can put that screw in any time, and it's certainly this thing certainly isn't going to fall off. So I'm not going to worry about that now. I'll find I'll find a screw. Put a note to self. <laughs> okay for that um it's odd that i would have three of of that same size there must have been a fourth one somewhere but uh, that's what i was thinking drone shot yeah, and Take I, I, one of your other ones to put it in here <laughs> okay so now what we need to do is we need to solder up the motor wires to this thing and the battery lead and everything else and the capacitor and i like to use these capacitors they give you the capacitor here i'm going to use this 
I'll cut it shorter, but this is big, uh, heavy 12 gauge wire. Not that I need it. This comes with, I think, 14 gauge wire, a little tiny, a little tiny uh, piece of wire and a connector. But I want, I do want to use the capacitor and the capacitor is going to kind of hang out, hang out the back here. And let's see which this is. This is minus. There's a little minus, and this is plus. And the capacitors always have a big minus on the side. Can you see it? See the big gold stripe down the side? So that is not really, but I believe you. So that's going to go this way. And uh, and you're putting that on what again? Uh, on the flight controller? Yeah. Yeah, on the ESC board. On the ESC board. On yeah. what? On what particular pad? On the ones that say the battery pads down here at the bottom. Okay. These are all motor tabs along the sides. Okay. And up front here is the plug where that that goes to the to the flight controller. So the soldering iron heating up there. I got to tin all the tin all the leads. Let me zoom in so you guys can. Can see the soldering that I'm doing here. I try to give try to give a good a good view of this so you can see. That's see the, right on. there, right there. Yeah, if I move it out of the if it come if, it, like if I'm not centered, yell at me. Mars, you heard yell at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Now these these things, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to melt them. The uh, plastic. So I will take these off for the time being. The plastic, what? These little standoffs. Okay, okay. I'm taking them off, so that I because the the, uh, the wires are soldered right, right up next to them. So I'm going to take. I'll take these off. One of these doesn't have it. I already got the one that doesn't have a screw. These little buggers are tight. Bear with me if you can't see this. It's nothing. Ah. It's loosening. Wow. There we go. Drone pool joined us. Oh, Dan, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you, man. Okay, let me get this back in in here, and uh, so we're gonna start soldering, tinning up, tinning up pads, and we'll start with this one up here. Sorry. <laughs> well, you're right. Away we go. My text message uh, notification. Brought up Dane. Can you see oh, what I'm doing on there? Yep. Only one we don't will tell you. Okay. What's the thickness on your solder? Oh, this I have no idea. Okay. You really if you really want to know? No, 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 it's okay. It's just can, it's probably the thinnest, right? I can tell you. I have I have the technology. I don't want to take I have, the game. I have the technology right here. It is 0.8 millimeters. Okay. Hey, Mitch, look at the screen. Drone pool. That my mic. That's Kez's. Is that my mic or, or somebody else's mic? I, no, not mine. All right, that one. It's yours. I got this wireless mic here. I wondered why it makes noise. Am I still in the in the picture? Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay, and now the big pads for the big pad is a little off, but we'll forgive you. All right, there we go. Let me see. There we go. 
That's much big patch do soak up the heat. There we go, and we will flip it around this way. That's one thing I've got to do, Mitch, is get one of them tips that you're using on the soldering iron. I like I like this chisel tip, and and yeah. especially when I when if you've seen me solder on these tiny little twenty millimeter boards, you know it, it has that real sharp point. You can stick yeah, that. A, can you see the point on that? You can. A few of the guys here use. I noticed they're using that as well. Can stick that right down in there. It came yeah. it came with this uh, soldering iron that I have. Yeah. And plus, it makes sense, like the way that you explain it. Like, like I'm watching you put it on there; it's like beautiful. There's something about the flat that, yeah, like you said, it heats up when it's just a point. Well, it's you got to remember a lot of heat's trying to get through yeah, a point. A, a lot of heat will get through along something long rather than there. You know what I mean? You can, can apply a lot of heat lot by more. just laying it on there, laying the flat on there, or you yeah. can apply just a tiny little bit of heat by just touching. Yep. touching the point to it okay so we got all of those things let's get the motor wires and i do i have enough wire to bring them in around the back i think i do uh i want to try to keep it centered for you i got it zoomed in a little tight here let me come out just a little bit there uh yeah, if i come in from the back like this i just got to make sure that uh that I don't have. Uh, all right. So what I'm going to do is uh, solder the front side first, and uh, and then I'll put the pigtail on because curling the wires around would will get in the way of that. So let's see. Start start over here on this side, and I got three wires. Let's see what the lengths of these wires are. Pretty much the same. So. That's what we'll do. I think because I unsoldered them, I think I'm going to uh, do a little little tinning action on them just to make sure they got some fresh solder on them. Supposedly, there's a company that if you mess up the or you uh, yeah, if you mess up the flight controller, they replace it. No, where'd you hear that? I forget which one. I'll have to ask Chris. I don't, uh, I never heard of that, but uh, I, I, I had said that the reason I like to, uh, the reason I like to um, test them first before I start soldering is if there's a problem with the board and it won't, won't fire up in beta flight. If there's a, then they can't say that I destroyed the board by soldering because there's nothing on it. It's just a virgin board right out of the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because sometimes they actually want video evidence. Otherwise, you ain't get no yep. money back or no replacement or like they really try to, you know, handball it, put it that way. That's not, not down far enough. I'm going to get the right angle here. So I apologize if my hands get in the way. But uh, That's all good. you got to do the job, Mitch. Got to do it, yeah. An operation, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's just like surgery, man. Yeah, well, in a not too distant future, I reckon we'll be bloody soldering parts to our body's fingers back on and stuff like that <laughs> look it's already out there people with you know artificial limbs i mean you know all right it won't be soften isn't that wires attached but you know they attach nerve endings nowadays yeah it's crazy okay we got those three well, actually, Carlos, speaking of nerve in there, reminds me of uh, some doctor here in Australia 
uh, world breaking, he, um, it, it, I, I think it's only with someone that's got like below the knee and the way he attaches the artificial limb, it actually reads everything from like he's attached. So the leg knows what to do. Right. Incredible. Incredible. And there's good news on cancer because they've actually, there might be a cure. Not for sale. So. What are you doing, Mitch? You're redoing the tinning? Just trimming the wires. Just they're, you trimming know. the wires, okay. Just a little shorter. Yeah, they found something, um, uh, something in the bloodstream, the scientists here, that they add more of something else and it repels the cancer. So keep an eye out on the news if, like, you know, just letting people know. There could be um, how much cool. business they would lose. Like, it could be, it could be like it's it's only a certain cancer. I think mm. I don't know if it's prostate or breast. Oh, I can't remember what cancer it is. It's not all cancers. I know there's a lot of different cancers. But if if they've gotten to that point, I'll tell you what, it's good news. Yeah, stuff to save a lot of lives, a lot of lives. It's people doing trials at the moment, and what is it? What one person should not be here, and they're they they're actually. It's gone without chemo, without nothing. So, yeah, yeah, no radiation, no, not like I'm, I'm, I was watching the news thing and oh my God, that is insane. Like, it's just, that's just really good news. Yeah. Cancer's a big business. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, you had solder on the pad, you had solder on the wire. So, that's why you don't need any more solder. You just. Right. Connecting heat, and I'll I'll check it out. And if it doesn't look like there's enough solder, I'll go ahead and uh, hold the wire down with a little appliance and add, and then feed some more solder into it. Okay. But uh, this way, I get them. Yeah, the way wires. Excuse me. And a shorter tweezer wouldn't work better for you, necessarily? I don't think it'd make any difference. Okay. There we go. The hook, hook nose tweezers are sort of the best because you can get your hand out of the way. Yeah, I got bed. a pair. I got a pair. Yeah. Of, got a couple pair of them here, these uh, these kind of hook nose ones. But I like yeah. I, I kind of like the straight ones. It depends on yeah, what you're doing, I suppose. Okay, yeah. so we've got, and I got to make sure that these wires. Um, Joe C just joined us. Oh, okay. Just letting you know. Clear this stupid cage here, too, because, uh, yeah, that'll work. All right, so let me put the uh, standoffs back on the front here. board down I say this is going to be you know since I I've got all these special quads that I value I don't have anything that that I really want to take out and just beat up you know what I mean so yeah. I figure why not just take all of this extra crap that I had and throw it together and uh, into something that just flies, not worrying about cinem cinematography, not worrying about whether the video is pretty out of it or anything, just something that, uh, that I can, uh, that I can fly to practice, fly it and not worry about it. If I lose it, no big deal. Not bad, yeah. uh, okay. So now we got to, uh, Emacs motors. Yeah. These are the Emacs ecos. They're relatively inexpensive. Okay, so these these need to come. This needs to come just out the bottom of this thing. It doesn't need to be too long. In fact, it just really so you know, we're looking at a blue mat. Needs to be real short. I think that uh, that that probably I'll make it a little bit longer. We'll do it like that. All right. So I'm gonna cut most of this wire off here. Did you make that, or it came like that? No, it came like that. All right. I bought a little bag, had a half a dozen of them from Amazon. And uh, okay. So 
let's strip a little insulation off of this. God, I love this silicon insulation. This stuff's terrific. And where is your wire strippers, Mitch? My what? Wire strippers. Oh, in my toolbox. Where do they belong? <laughs> <laughs> Why? You know, for this silicone insulation, you don't, need, you don't really need strippers. No. You don't ever have to pierce it. You just squeeze it and pull and it breaks. Yeah, you, know? you could just, you could use your fingernails. Yeah, so, so I don't, I don't worry about it. If it was, if it was plastic wire or I, I had to worry about actually either denting or cutting a strand or two, then I would, then I would use a bona fide wire stripper. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, that's what I thought I'd, I should this, still oh, bring them yeah. out. Uh, I don't think you really need it. No. Nah. All right, now we're going to suck up some heat here on this uh, <laughs> tin and these things. It's because they're thick. Is that what you're getting? Oh, at? God, yeah. yeah. The number 12 wire. This stuff, it's, just a, it's a big heat sink. But you have to. Uh, have to hold it on there long enough until you can touch the solder to the other side and it sucks it right on through. You know what I mean? You have mm -hmm. to put the heat on one side and it has to end up being able to melt the solder on the other side. Then you know you got it hot enough. Hey Mitch, just a question, I know it might sound silly, but you know how the solder's going in and your leads are pointing straight up, does that suck like through the- Yeah, like it always, solder will always, be pulled towards the heat. Okay. But some of it- No, what I mean is if you, if you turn the wires, instead of having them up that way, if you turn them sideways and you're adding solder that way, does it still travel like along, like it would this it, way yeah, down? It, it's not gonna, it'll, some of it will, will wick wick down in Into, under yeah, the right. insulation, but I don't think gravity has anything to do with that. It's, it's, it's yeah, just gonna be stuck towards the heat. Wherever it's yeah. hot enough to melt, it'll-, it'll yeah, I've always wondered whether it would, it would gravity would have that effect. I don't know if it does or not, but I don't worry about it. As long as I got, as long as I got uh, a solid glump of solder on there. That's it doesn't matter. And now it? let's see, this is plus this way. So what I want to do is I want to not have to hold this. I want to be able to, so let's see how to end this. I want to get, I want to bring the, the soldering iron in from, which is going to be the best, the best angle here. I think this way might be the best angle right there. So I want to use my little fifth hand thing here. And clamp this. This is kind of rocking around. I think that it might be a good idea to make it a little more solid. There we go. And then this. Thomas O'Sullivan just joined us. So what I'm what I'm doing is is I don't know if you can oh, see my. this or not, but what I have is I, I have the uh, this thing friend. is actually the weight of this is is pushing down on, on that solder pad right there like yeah. that. Now the trick is this takes just a tremendous amount of heat to melt all this stuff here. So I gotta come in. And try to get the iron down where it where it where it hits the the pad and the wire at the same time. What do you have your set at three or four hundred? Four hundred centigrade. Four hundred. Did you tin the pad? Oh yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. That ain't going anywhere. <laughs> That is on there. And it looks like I got on the negative side just a tiny little thing of solder sticking out of screen, just so you know. Yeah, I know. Okay. Okay. That's good. All right. So now we do the we do the negative. 
do the negative pad here, make sure these things aren't touching each other. I think. And one uh, pad soaks up more too, doesn't it, Mitch? Yeah, the ground. The ground, soaks, that's it. Soaks up more, yeah. See, but look at this. The solder actually wicked all the way back. See, all the way back to the back, but just fine. You know, that's okay. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of solder in that thing. Plenty. Yeah, well, it's better. It's stronger as well. Yeah. John Poole uses a bigger tip when he does the leads. Yeah, you could, or else you could just turn turn the temperature up. Turn too. the heat up, yeah. Just sharing his uh, comment. Yep. Yeah. Don't yell at me. <laughs> I'm not yelling at you. I know. I know. Just kidding. Come man. on, melt, 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 melt. Flow, flow, flow. Come on, buddy. Oh God, come on, baby. This is the one. This is the ground one. This is where. This is the pain in the ass one. <laughs> just, you hope you don't burn up the board while you're doing this. You should have done that one first, Mitch, because then it makes it easier afterwards. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Not really. The same thing, I suppose. Just get the but Yeah, that's taken a lot more heat. There it is. Almost. Man, what a glump. I think I don't think that's gone anywhere. That looks good to me. <laughs> and the nice thing is to solder the capacitor on is easy because no, there's, no way, yeah, there's no way you can melt that whole joint while you're trying to solder a capacitor on there. Yeah, no. There's all right. No, you don't you don't put a tie wrap on that at all, do you? Later on? I, I usually tie wrap it to the frame somewhere. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. But that uh that's going to be okay. And there's room out the back for the capacitor to stick out the back. So that's, oh, that's fine. Okay. All right. So now let's take and get the capacitor on there, which is right here. And we'll put the capacitor right on top of the wires and get it, get it fairly close. So minus is on that side. Minus black, positive red. Yep. Okay. And we'll cut this. Uh oh. What? Netherlands man is here. Roland just joined us. Oh, Roland, how you doing? This is like, this is like Mitch, Mitch, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> All right. So we'll bend the other one down to match that bend and cut it off here. Theoretically, they say for 4S, you don't even need a capacitor, but you know, it can't hurt. No, it really can't hurt. And, uh, I've seen them on three and two S capacitors as well. So let's uh, we just tin the capacitor just a touch, not a lot, just a little something for good measure. Tiny yeah. little bit of solder on there, and we'll take the capacitor and make sure we got minus a black. So that's 14 potential solders, right? What's that? 14 solders so far. Oh, you counting? Well, three three each motor and then these two, right? Yeah, that'd be eight. Isn't it three times four? You say, I got two motors soldered, which oh, is- No, 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 but I mean, at the end, it's gonna be 14. That's what I mean. Plus the capacitor, six, third. Okay, so the capacitor is now soldered on there. And uh, let me zoom in. I suppose you can a bit so we can see what I got. Is it close? There we are. Can you see that? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So that that looks okay. And uh, I know it's not really necessary, but I'm going to take a little bit of rubbing alcohol. 
and clean some of the flux off of it. Q-tip here. I don't know if this makes it look better or not, but it gets, gets, well, that's cool. Get some of that goo out of there. Mitch, since you have Mars here, I'm going to rest my eyes for a half hour and join you in a few. Hey, no problem. My eyes are hurting. Well, Thanks I'm not hurting. for uh, <laughs> it, buddy. Appreciate I, it. I'll come back. Mars, okay. keep them coming. Right. Don't leave them, all right? No, I'll stay. I'm, I'm all right. All right, buddy. All right, everybody well, in chat. All right, Carlos, take it easy. Okay, so uh, there we go. Three more motor wires to go. Got the capacitor. Got that. I think that uh, I think that looks looks okay there. I don't think it's going anywhere. So now we need these. There we go. This is the shortest one. Ah, tin these a little bit. Anybody new come into the chat, Mars? Mm -mm. Sorry, I had a mouthful of coffee. <laughs> no, not yet. Roland's the last one in. It is, isn't it, Roland? It's beautiful. Roland just saying, Roland was just just posted nice clean build. Okay. I know, that Mitch. You can't make a clean build out of a Franken quad. You got to make it all messed up and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> got to put some. Got to put some skulls and some crossbones on it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy of 13 just joined us. It's just habit, you know, the way you do things. Yeah. No, no job's I wanted, better than I wanted, um, I wanted to fly. I wanted to be able to, you know, be somewhat reliable. Yeah. There we go. Okay. They're not going anywhere. And, uh, Last three, then we will power it up, see what happens. Put the flight controller on it, power it up, and see what happens. Doing all right, Daddy of 13. Doing good. Oh, how you doing, Daddy of 13? Good to see you. Let me take a second, take a break, and get a little, little sip of water here. Go for it, Mitch. Oh, man. Okay. Check the chat out. Magic smoke ruling. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Magic smoke. Hey, Roland, that's why we have a Roland, that's why we have a smoke stopper. You guys you guys like my Halloween motif? Yeah, it looks good. I have here. You like that? It's a Halloween at, over my that Halloween side. Halloween motif. I also I, I got a uh, I was rooting around and I have a source of uh, royal royalty free images yep. that uh, that I have. And uh, so I found a couple of pretty neat ones. Here's 
Here's uh How's that? You like that? <laughs> you, you, I think when you move, Mitch, you're moving on your microphone or yeah, something. Yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's on my belt here. Yeah, yeah, you can hear it. Mike, maybe the mic isn't screwed in. Yeah, lost. Can't hear That's you at all now. Oh yeah, yeah, you're back. Yeah. And then uh, I like this one too. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I found. Uh, no, nah, your mic's gone again. I had it the right side. Let me see That's if back. I get it the right size. There we go. Your mic's dropping in and out. Wireless. This is the this is the deal. Something's moving. Something's right. Yeah. Oh, something's loose or something. Hang in, there. Hang in there with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you guys can hear me through my other mic now, but it's yeah. it's not close to my head, but it's there anyway. I can hear you, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why this thing is doing that. Maybe it wasn't plugged in all the way. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing them. Put it back in again. Well, we'll try it and see what happens. Yeah. Unless the wire's bad. Here. How's that? Is that better? Yeah, that's better. I think uh, it doing might be it again. Hector on this. On this mic. Yeah, what, whatever you're doing, I can hear you hear it as you move it around. You can't hear nothing as you're talking. Use this mic. I'll just bring it in here, and you guys can. Uh, you, you'll be hearing me come and go. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll turn the wireless off, and I might be quieter when I'm over. I'll try to swing it over towards the workbench when I hit over that way. It sounds okay. All these new. Oh, this. Well, this is my regular mic here, so it ought to oh, okay. sound okay. But uh, let me turn off the wireless mic here. Yeah, it, it, that, was, it, that, um, was a, that was a good idea. It sounds like the wire. I don't know. It, maybe it's. Well, I can. I can uh, just touch it right you know wiggle it right where it goes yeah. into the connector and it makes noise and you can hear it yeah yeah yeah, yeah evidently i must have i think one time i I, dr I dropped this thing and it pulled on the wire and i think uh, it may, may have destroyed i, I it. think you're right mitch yeah i can i can fix that place the, replace the three and a half inch connector on it it's okay, just yeah. those wireless mics make it uh Make it a it's heaps easier, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be looking at I'm moving all over the place. I don't have to be right in front of the microphone. You know? Yeah, I'm going to be looking at one of them later on in the year as well. So that uh, is that loud enough now? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, okay. sounds good to me. All righty. Ah, okay. Uh, Baduga, Baduga joined us as well. Oh, how you doing, my friend? Good to see you. Let's see how my stream strength is going. Good. Super, very good. Okay. All right. Let's go back to it. Finish that up and then and then we'll fire up the uh we'll fire it up and see make the motor spin and then we'll adjust the motor directions and then it's on to the flight controller. So back to the table. Frank and quad daddy of 13, Mitch's building. <laughs> a Frank and quad, yeah. That's a great name. I didn't invent that name. I heard I yeah. heard somebody else use that name Frank and Quad, and it, it it's it's a it, it's it's a great description of what this is, you know. Yeah. All right, so we got three more wires, and then the motors are all wired up. And let's see, this is the shortest one here. Put a little solder on them. Can you see everything in the picture? Okay. Yeah. So is the sun up over there yet, Mars? Or are you still sitting in the dark? Uh, uh, just yeah, it's daylight outside. Oh, okay. That makes you feel better when you get up too early and it's dark. At least yeah, well, we've um, our clocks went forward, so daylight's a bit earlier now, and uh, oh, yeah, you did, didn't you? And and a bit longer, like till just before nine o'clock, and then it'll start going. Sun will go down. Whereas usually six o'clock and it's dark, so. 
which is our winter time. That's we got the shorter hours in winter and longer hours in summer. Well, not longer hours, but more daylight hours. Sorry. Yeah. Well, we have it next month. We 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 go in. Oh, your Eastern clock's changed too, yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're on Eastern Daylight Time now. I would just assume yeah. they left it the same all year, but what happens yeah. Yeah, but is, it, it is for the kids going to school in the morning, it doesn't get light till 8 o'clock. You know, that's that's right. exactly. Late, so they grab that extra hour from from the afternoon. And, uh, well, see, where, where um, Spike lives in Western Australia, the, the clocks don't change there, it just stays the same. Okay, we have motors soldered up. So let's see, we've got motors, we got the pigtail to the right, plus, plus, minus, we got the capacitor on there, minus to the right side. So here we go. So now we're going to put the flight controller back on top. And the flight controller plugs into here okay yeah looks and good I need one more standoff Let me uh, clean the other side. I may as well clean this side a little bit, you know, so it's not to. Yeah, want, yeah, clean it up because you don't did. Want it to feel, don't want it to feel left out. Yeah. No, that's right because you sold it afterwards as well. You know what? There's one. There's one here that I don't like, and that's this one. It's coming in too much from the side. I don't like that. I want to. I to redo this one. Oh, shut the soldering iron off. I'm, I was. I was a little bit. Uh, a little bit premature. Uh, it's got to, I'll tell you, these soldering irons heat up pretty quick. Is that the one running on battery? No. Oh. No, it's, uh, yeah. I'll show you. Oh, okay. Yeah. See it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's got this nice little, nice little stand here with the yeah, I like that the steel wool. It's got the steel wool in here where you put it in there and it cleans the tip, and then the wet sponge to to wipe it off. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice, uh, nice little deal. Yeah, I, I like that. All right, so now it's hot enough. Now I can pull this off. Of course, now that I completely cleaned the tip, there's no solder. On. So a soldering iron tip will not transfer much heat without some solder on it. No. Oh, God, that's heavy. All right. So let's take, take this. and. Take that's this. mine, Mitch. That's the holder. Wait a minute. I'll get I'll get to it in a second. No, I did the solder first, yeah. Let me see. Huh. Hang, hang on a minute. That's the holder. Oh, okay. And that's the whole kit and caboodle. Oh, and then, man. That's a weller. That's a good gun, man. A yeah, good yeah. To, yeah. To set it, you use this. Where the hell is it? And you put it on on here. And you can set it like it's got a magnet, some magnet pin thing. i, I got no idea. But I had to use that. And you, then in here is a magnet. So I 
right there. You put it on that logo and it changes the settings in here from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Oh, no kidding. That's cool. Yeah, because yeah, I'm thinking, how the hell do I change this thing? Or what the? <laughs> oh, man, reading, reading, watching videos. Oh, well, tapping leave, all over the screen like an idiot, you know? I leave mine on on, cel on centigrade because that seems to be. And, and in the drone, I usually leave everything set to meters. And yeah, on. everything's two, three hundred. It but seems to be come up. Becoming a fair a, a standard for the yeah because I um, do things with our you're drone. right Mitch I, that's the reason why I changed mine because I asked Faze Mino Fly what what does he set his at and I think he said around 280 300 something like that and I'm looking yeah. at mine and mine says like 49.6 or something like what the I said mate what what the hell have I got this set on and I must have it must have come from the factory on Fahrenheit setting or something. And then I change it. Now it reads like 200 to 400, whatever it goes up to. Yeah, I, I, leave my, I leave my my soldering gun at 400 degrees. 400, yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of people recommend 375, but I like it. And guys like Joshua Bardwell, man, set theirs up to maximum. You know, the problem is you can, if you're not careful and hold it on a little too long, you can lift, start to lift pads off the board and all, that, kinds, of, all kinds of bad stuff. Yeah, well, they'd have it set at that temperature because um, they know how to solder. You or know what I mean? It's they know to, yeah, they know to, you know, like if I was to set it at that, I'd probably, you know, <laughs> burn a hole through the pack because I'd have it there too long. So lower the temperature and minimise the risk. But, you know, that's, you know, when you solder like yourself, you'll always have it at a maybe a higher setting than what I would, for example, you know. Yep. I like, like I say, I like 375 yeah to uh to 400 and i usually just leave it at 400. all right so let me put a couple ebr joined us who joined us ebr hey how you doing my friend would help to put the last standoff in here you know okay standoffs flight controller uh Drone pool asks, what stack is that, Mitch? Is stack is what? Stack. Oh, this is the Mamba F405. The diatone, probably one of the most common <laughs> prolific flight stacks and, and cheapest in the business. And I've used a number of them and they all work. They've all worked great. The only thing I don't like about it is it's kind of short on UARTs. Yeah. Right. Um that Darwin Digital joined us as well. Oh, hello, Darwin. But I, uh, I, I've learned how to use soft serial. If I need extra an extra UART or two for something, I can always use what they call soft serial and What's create it? create more UARTs that way. So. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, and uh, for things sometimes for telemetry, like one, you know, if I've got if I have a a GPS and telemetry and smart audio and, and all that other stuff you know or or a dji unit which which actually is going to use three three uarts uh yeah. okay so now comes the moment of truth guys and we go and we dig out the old smoke stopper and a battery and a battery okay so we got Hey, here we are. So we have flight controller, capacitor, pigtail. Everything's plugged in. You all know the theory behind the smoke stopper by now, I guess. Mars, you know what a smoke stopper does? Huh? Yep. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put on my uh, my little shield here. Question of the hour is, do I really need it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well. What is it? Just got to undo them for, undo yeah. the four screws and put it in, Mitch. I mean, it's solder, two seconds. Solder a little wire to it. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if you it or not. I, I, I've watched other guys doing build videos. I've never seen another flight controller come with one of those things. But uh, if nothing else. It is uh, 
it is uh, coated, so it's not conductive, even though it's a, a ground plane. Yeah, uh, it keeps <laughs> could help from keep keep things from actually shorting. So this possibly. Goes, so this is going to well, go in. Maybe um, maybe that's why it's there, just as a protective measure. So that goes and then, there. And now what we want to do is we want to find which ground thing we want to put it to. So let's see where there's a ground I'm not using. There's a LED ground right here. Okay, so I'll I'll put it on this one right here. And let me get a little piece of wire. Nice, nice red wire. I'll use brown. Brown wire can be ground. I'll use brown. I got a little little piece of brown wire. Uh, Dan Drumple just said people say those shields cause trouble. Really? There you go. Maybe I should not put it on there. Or maybe they maybe they did something wrong, you know? <laughs> I don't see how it can hurt. Uh -huh. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to take, this is going to be, this is, this is delicate here. Where's my solder? We're going to take and just tin that tiny little. Doesn't take much solder. And uh, make this tiny little wire. Solder it on. I do that before before I deal with the smoke stopper because uh, um, if there is a short somewhere, I want the smoke stopper in the circuit. Yeah. So I don't I don't blow it up. And I like these boards. They come they come with the with the silicone grommets, which helps shock mount them. You don't really have to shock mount yeah. any of the C's, so the stack is somewhat shock mounted. For the money, for a little over 40 bucks for a whole flight stack, I don't see how how you can beat it. Although uh, iFlight has this stack they call, it's a suck sex or something, Sussex with the EXX on the end. and yeah. That's the one they're using in the Nazgul and they, they say that's a that's a uh, an excellent flight stack as well for fifty something bucks. Okay, yeah. But that's an F four as well. The F seven stacks are all closer to a hundred bucks. I know that I bought the little mini F seven stack for less money for my uh, little Acrobrat. So. Yeah. Okay, so that's that. That's that. And now. This has got to go to this, to this little ground. We'll get that out of the way. Right here. Okay, so we got that little ground wire on there. Not going to hurt anything. Now, let's, everybody, hold your breath. 
Fingers plug, crossed. Plug the smoke stopper in. So that's in there. Take the battery. Here we go. I like that beep 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 sound. Yep. Yes, sir. -y. Okay. So now that we have that powered up, we will take our USB port and plug it into the controller. And we're going to see how the motors are spinning. All right. So there's the USB port. Let's go back over here to beta flight. There we are. And uh, connect. Oh, every, I'm going to have to update it because it's going to keep reminding me every time I do yeah. it. It's time to update it. Now let's go to the motors tab. Let me check the ports, make sure that nothing's changed. VTX, smart port, correct. The motors tab. I understand that if I start these things with props on, I'm going to kill myself. Yes. Plug the flight, plug the battery in. And spin up the motors. I hear motors. Okay. So now we go back to here and all four motors are turning. And let's see. That is correct. That's backwards. That's backwards. And that's correct. So 50-50, guys. 50-50. All right. So this is motor one and two and three. So motor three is correct. Motor four is correct. Motor one and motor two need to be reversed. Okay. Motor one and motor two need to be reversed. The two motors on the left side of the quad. One and two. So now we will shut the motors down and we will disconnect from beta flight. And we will go into CL Heli. And open it up. There we are, and we will connect BL Heli, and we will read the setup. Powers on, good. Read the setup. And there we go. And we need to change motor one to reversed. Uh, it's still on the... Stuff. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah you right. can see this. Okay, so we have BL Heli up here now. Yep. And there's motor one was normal. I'm going to reverse that. Motor yep. two was normal. I'm going to reverse that. Then down here, I'm going to write the setup. Yeah, the other two are good. That's right. The other two are normal. I'm going to write the setup. I'm going to disconnect from from this. It, it went. I hear it. it rebooted the quad. Yeah. I'm going to go back into beta flight. I'm going to connect. I'm going to go back to the motors tabs. I'm going to agree to cut my fingers off. Yeah. Spin up the motors. Got the motors spinning. We're going to go back over here. And we're going to see if it's correct now. So this motor, correct. This motor, correct. This motor, correct. This motor, correct. See how I do that, Mars? I touch yeah, my to it and watch which way yeah. the quad moves. <laughs> it's a, lot, a lot easier than unsoldering a wire and swapping a wire. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 there's no, there's no reason to, uh, no, nah. to do that with BL Heli. Okay, so we have the motors. We're done with that. They're all working in the right direction, so we don't need to deal with that anymore. Let's unplug the power from the quad and move the battery out of the way. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward, BL Heli. You know you want motors, and it's easy to click reverse, and it's it's done. Now, if you got BL Heli 32, you got to use a different configurator. Yeah, I've got 32. Which is a lot more complicated than... It is, yes. Than the, than the <laughs> BL Heli, but this is... There's a lot, a lot more in there. A lot more to do, yeah. This is BL Heli S. And I've, it's I've only used the... Uh, with 32, I've only used the music editor thing to put sounds, so that's all I've... Haven't looked at anything else. All right, now let's take a look. 
we'll take a look at the board here and we'll see where we got to connect everything and see if I need to actually go get some kind of a some kind of a diagram for this board. And let's just there you go. It's like a microscope, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's awesome. I can get right into it. That's it. Okay. So now we have a camera to connect. Camera. And I will unplug the camera for the time being. And the camera is usually up at the at the front of the quad. That's where they usually put the camera uh, input. So let's see if it's obvious. Uh, there's nothing written. It's I know it's it's in here, but there's nothing written in here. So I need to find myself a diagram for for this board. Yeah. I need to find a diagram for it. I have one printed up somewhere, but I'm just going to go ahead and, and get one off the internet. So what we're going to do is we're going to close out this for the time being, and we're going to go and type in here, Mamba F405, enter, and we're going to look at the images. And there it is. And we're going to, okay, be that way. <laughs> Let's take that uh, image and just move it onto my, onto my desktop. And then we'll open up the image. Now oh, it's a web picture. Uh, maybe this one. Dan just finished building a three inch last night, pain in the butt, he reckons. <laughs> I'd agree with you, Dan. I've watched the boys build them little three inch micros. Oh my God, I don't know how they do it. Okay. So, uh, I'll open this up and, uh, See if this gives me a, a clue. <laughs> Makes it hard, doesn't it, EPR, when you've got big hands yeah, and you're building a free. <laughs> there's the receiver. There's the VTX. And there's the camera. But that doesn't look... Wouldn't they have something, man, wouldn't Mamba have it on their website? Yeah, well, that doesn't look, the picture I just I got doesn't look anything like the board that I have. So that's not. No, I don't that's think it's. The wrong wrong. Picture. But this is the picture that, this is the picture right that here. One there. Yeah. So let's see if, if I can save this image and actually save it as a JPEG. PNG. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, there you go. We'll save that and we'll open that up and, uh, Let me make sure it's the right it's the right image here first. It's it's not it's, it's kind of low resolution. Where's the camera? Uh, camera. God, this still doesn't look like the board that I had here. Uh, you know why? Because I think this is the mini. I'm looking at the mini board. The uh, yeah, board. I was just reading that F405 mini power tower MK2. Yeah, I need the, the uh, F405 mini power tower. Yeah, I need the Save image as F405 Mark II. And let me take a look at that and see. Yes, yes, yes. I think that's the board that I have. Yes. Okay. So let's everybody 
Let's everybody take a look at this board here, and we're going to go over to this one. Okay. And uh, the magic of OSD, I mean OBS. That we got OBS, OSD, OCD. Okay, so what I'm looking for is where the camera goes. So the camera is what I thought, right up here next to the connector. Up to the connector, yeah. You've got camera, ground, five volts, the first, and then the two buzzers. And the buzzers, yeah. So if I go back over here, oh, what happened to my, let's see. There we are. If I go over here, it appears that I'm dealing with these two are the buzzers that look correct to you. And then these yep. three right here are the camera. Yeah, you're five volt, yeah. Okay. okay. So I'm going to turn it sideways like this. And it is. Camera is the first one, ground, then five volts. Okay. So let's tin those three up. Ah, should I turn the soldering iron off again? Ah. All right. Time, good time for a little break uh, while the soldering iron heats up. And I'll come over here and, and visit for a little while. So uh, put myself in front of that crazy graphic. There we are. That's a nice background, isn't it? Different. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Um, Grown pool, EBRs, non bed force back. Yeah, that was the 20 by 20, I think. I built a three inch two last month. I love building five inches a lot more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the three inches, man. That's why I don't want to be dealing with the 16 millimeter whoop stacks. Yeah. Or on that stuff, man. That'd be crazy. Uh, how are we doing in here? We got 12 people hanging in here for this. Wow. Yeah. I watched the boys nearly every Friday night mucking around with three inch quads, and oh my God, <laughs> they, they're, they're insane, these fellas. You know, something I, I, after flying whoops and after flying three inch quads, I'm, I'm a five, five and seven five inch. In. What I really, what I really enjoy flying. It's just something smoother and more controllable about them you know what i mean just well they've got um this this weekend on sunday are the nationals here in australia in canberra so yeah i was gonna go but because we're going to spikes next week um yeah not enough finances for for yeah. everything so yeah i'm gonna have to miss out this i wanted to go though you can't be everywhere, you know. I'm, I'm, no, I'm no. not going to. I'd like to go to spin up. I'd like to meet yeah. all these, all these people in person who I feel like are friends now. But uh, you can just, you know, I mean, that's be a thousand dollar bill for me, just, well, yeah. just for a day, just for a day. You know what I mean? That, that's yeah. more than a complete. That's DJI FPV system. Yeah, so, exactly right. What would I rather have? Would I rather have a complete DJI FPV system? or go to Austin, Texas and deal with airports and airplanes and hotels and all that for a one, for one day, you know, the air system wins out, doesn't it? <laughs> yep, the DJI. And that's one of the reasons why I, instead of going to that, to spin up, I bought the, the DJI instead. Well, that's it. Well, you could, there's always going to be another one next year. So, well, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to have something down here in my neck of the woods. I keep thinking that it would be fun to actually host an event, you know? Yeah. In the winter time in Florida, I mean, there's a real, there's a reason to come to Florida in the winter time. You know? All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, according to the diagram, it's yellow, black, and then red. So let's. Uh, I'm going to come in this way with the soldering iron. I'm going to try to keep it tight here so you can see what I'm doing. There you are. That's where I'm soldering. So the first one is yellow. 
it's very expensive for what it is. Is that the FPV system you're talking about, Thomas? Or I don't know. I've I've seen from. I'll tell you what. Uh, once you look through them, you're going to say, "Oh, that money." It's you don't you don't. If, if you were to buy HDOs, by the time you buy the goggles, the the module that goes in the goggles, by the time you buy a transmitter and your quad, it's I tell you what, it's not that far apart and. The quality out of the DJI system, mate, from the bottom of my heart, it craps on anything else that's out there, and I don't care what anyone says, man. It's, I've been through it, mate. It is, it's insane, yeah? Insane. Okay. It really is. So there's the camera. The camera is installed. And now we need to find out where the VTX goes. So. Yeah. And I've actually watched um, an Australian guy here. He, um, he tested the bike frost system. That's that. I don't like the idea that you have to have a receiver on a tripod kind of thing, uh, and then a wire right. and the goggles. I'm sorry to say, Bite Frost is still not up there with DJI though. Uh, well, because it's a system that's been around for a while. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, so what we've got here. Good news is that they're, they're you know it's going to rival everyone up, so that is a, a, a good sign. But for the money, I mean, give and take. You know what I mean? I reckon. Look, for the money, the DJI system is phenomenal. Wait a minute. Okay, the camera went here. So the VTX goes, okay, I see. The VTX goes on the side next to the USB port right there. And we are using TX3. They give you a, they actually give you a nine volt for the VTX, which which is great. I like that as, as a filtered nine volt out for the VTX instead of v, running it to VBAT. You know what I mean? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. Normally you hook a, a VTX up to the battery voltage, whatever yeah. the battery voltage is. But yes. VTXs don't like to work on five volts. They uh, usually work on higher voltage. Okay. But on this on this controller, if you look, you see what I'm looking at right here. I've yeah, got nine volt round TX3 and yeah. video. TX3 is the smart audio. Okay, yeah. So the those four wires right there, boom, 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 boom are the power of the ground for the VTX and nine volts is for the VTX. So I assume that this VTX will run on nine volts. So let me see what it says on the, on the VTX on the bottom of the little board. It says seven to 26 volts. There you go. See, it won't run on five, but it will run on seven. So seven, which is basically two to six S is what they're telling you to work on. Okay. Yeah. So, I have these right here. I have these four are going to go to the VTX. Yeah. And there's the VTX right there. And these are awful short wires. But this thing, I think, I think I probably need some longer wires on the VTX. What do you think? Don't know. I mean, it's going to Where's go. It gonna stick? It's got to go. It's got to go up top. The VTX oh. is going to, unfortunately, it's going to have to mount. So these these things will go. These will go in here like this. I have to take the. They go, they'll go down over these wires, but for right now, we'll put them there. The VTX is basically going to mount right up here on top of foam tape on top of this thing. You're going to need longer wires. <laughs> Underneath, see? Yeah. Uh, well, it's better to have like a little bit of slack in the wire than rather yeah, a I tight one knock and it'll rip the wire straight out. I agree. I'm going to take, I'm going to take this, uh, I need to take this, this apart here for right now just to, so I can need to take yeah, this. Well, not, apart. Yeah, not, yeah, not, so not I can easy, see easy how it long, fits. But, yeah. They might be a bit too short, a bit too tight, I reckon. Yeah, I can. Yeah. I have plenty of wire. There we go. Oh, there's my, there's my fourth long screw. 
that I can use under here. <laughs> See? Because I, I don't care on the side if it's got a big head. You know what I mean? <coughs> Perfect. Okay. And uh, so this here, let's fit this on in place. It goes like that. Oh, wow. This is. Getting this around these motor wires is, is interesting. That ought to do it. I, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing or not. But... Mm, mm, no, it's on the, the leg. Well, I got to tell you, this is some... I never did... <laughs> That's why I got rid of this frame. It was it's just so uh so tight. But how in the world did I get it on and off before around the flight controller? <laughs> Maybe zoom the camera out a bit, Mitch. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, getting this thing around the around all these wires that I've wrapped around the outside. Oh, okay, yeah. It's just, man, it's just... A bit of a pain. Yeah, it, 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 it's just... Uh, I know this fits on here, but it just doesn't want to seem to go over the play controller board with these motor wires sticking out. I may, I may have to run the motor wires on the other side of these. But wow. I mean, it does fit. But you know what? Uh, it may be that the, the ESC is too big for this side frame. Wouldn't that be a... Huh? Wouldn't that be a... Uh, it may be that the stack that Eosheen sells will fit, but this, this stack will not fit in this frame. Ah, well, that sucks. Huh. That sucks. I may have to actually, if you, you can see, run the water, grind some of this back a little bit. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But is it going to rub on the wires or the motor wires? No, the motor wires have insulation. That's not a problem. It's, okay. it's, it's just this. I'm thinking you might have to run the motor wires. Like on the inside, oh, it's, not, it's not the motor wires that no. it's, hit, it's hitting. It's hitting the. It's hitting the ESC. Let's see where the screws are. Let me take this. I, I guess I have to take this little side plate off to see what I'm dealing with here. I knew that there was something about this frame that that I, that uh, I there was a reason I got rid drone, of it. Yeah, drone shots just said take the carbon fiber off. Man. Yeah, I don't want this, this metal frame shortened into the into the board. Well, there we go. Wow. Let me see if I can actually get a screw into it. No, it's it's hitting the uh, it's hitting the flight controller by just a little bit on the. Uh, Yeah, it's running it. You know what it's running into? It's running into one of the capacitors on the bottom of the of the ESC. Now I could raise 
I could raise the ESC up just a little bit. I think I got another 16th of an inch here that I can go up with this thing. So what I may end up doing is going under and putting a, a washer or two under, right. underneath yeah. here. <laughs> Drone shot said file it, grind it. <laughs> well, it's still it's still a little close to those capacitors, so I don't I don't want to do that. But the good news is yeah. I can raise up the no, uh, if you can raise it up a little bit, right? Yeah. I can raise it up just a little bit. That'll give a little more room for the battery strap down on the bottom, too. So yeah. we'll take out these four screws here. Can you see what I'm doing? Mars, am I in the frame here? Uh no, yeah, now you are. Okay. Let me widen it out a little bit. There we go. That's better. Okay. And one more over here. I need me one of them cameras. <laughs> That's a, it's just, it's a video camera. Okay. Yeah. It's a Sony uh, a old one I've had for years and I've had for 10 years. All right. So this comes up here. And now if I put this frame on, Camera in the front, frame in the back. Yeah, if I raise it up just a little bit, I should be all right. It's going to be tight, but it'll it'll all get in there. So I need some washers, some plastic washers. And let's see what we got here. This is where having these assortments pays off. Yes. All right. I wonder if one or I need one or two, probably two, two washers. So let's put the screw in. Well, that's not long enough then. With two washers, that screw won't be long enough. This one will. Okay, so we'll, we'll get that in there. We'll put one. This is like surgery now. <laughs> two. And let's screw that on and see if everything, and see if that's too much. So there's one. Okay. So we do have the flight controller up a little higher now. And uh, yeah, that's a lot higher. So just to make sure it isn't too high. And that goes down to there. And that clears everything. And it just... Let me see how much the capacitors clear the metal frame. I think that one washer might do it. This is what custom building is all about, guys. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's try one washer. That's why I like these big frames, these big, big frames that have room for everything in them and top mount battery and all that, you know? Yeah, makes life a lot easier, doesn't it? Yeah, but I, but this will probably make a nice little drone just to, just to fly around. So that goes there. Clears the capacitor. But I, what I probably should do is put a screw in the bottom here where it goes to make sure I have it exactly in the right place. All this because I needed to see whether the... Uh, 
needed to see if the uh, BTX wires were long enough, right? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that why we embarked down this path here? Yep. <laughs> I just want to take a look. Nothing's anywhere near anything over here. Well, it is pretty close to that little capacitor, but it's not touching it. That's far. That's okay. So let's do this. I need I'm going to need screws that are a little bit longer. Then those three that I have, I can take, I'll rob this one. This was plenty long. Oh, Loctite. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> this was the first road I ever built this Tyro 99 and I, Thought it'd be really cool to lock tight these things in, and I did. And man, <laughs> they were tight. Yeah, better to use it than not. Yeah. But I don't need that long a screw to hold the, v the antenna mount in. So we'll take this. And put it up in here. And get a washer around it. God, it might be. Looks like it might actually be too long. But it's the same length as the other one, I think. All right. Let's get a washer in there. I swear this is becoming like surgery, Mark. Yeah. I love my drones, Ed. Just joined in the chat, too. Oh, Ed? Yeah. Hi, Ed. How you doing? Good to see you. Well, I don't see you, but I, I know you're there. This is a joy, man. Come on, get in there. Get in there. Oh. Let's see. All right. Oh, that's a little too long. Too long. <laughs> Shit. With one washer, it's a little too long. With two washers, this the top of this actually hits the top of the frame if i put two washers in there so i what i need is i need a screw that's a little shorter than this one see if i can squeeze it and keep that washer in place while i see if this screw is long enough to do it to reach through the washer Nope, not enough to grab. So I need a screw in between. between these two. Oh, wow. I hate to put these, these big-headed screws in there. Yeah, but you can use it for now and take them out after, yeah? Yeah, I could, but that's... Swap them over. That's not long enough. So what I need, I think the washer already fell out. Let's see what I got in this assortment here. We need M3. These, this one is a, uh, a 15 or a 16. That's a 16. I need a 14. Do I have a 14? No, I only have a 12 and a 16. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> so I am going to need to put another. 
I got plastic screws here. I wonder what size plastic screws I have. I've seen Bardwell get into this same pickle where he needed a, a 13. You know, he had a 12 and a 14, needed a 13. You know what I mean? These are plastic screws, which are okay to hold a stack in. But that's the uh, same thing. I got, I got uh, real long ones and not so long ones. Well, that's stupid. Oh, well, maybe I'll just. What I need to do, what I need to do, is I need to put a, a a longer standoff in the bottom. That's that's what I need to do. I need a longer standoff. Or well, like ABR just said, um, at the bottom of the frame, put a metal spacer. Well, what I need is a little bit longer standoff than what's. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, that's the deal. I need four of these standoffs here. To replace the the standoffs that are that are in there, two, and then I won't need any washers because that standoff is the same thickness as the little standoff that's in there. So I need to take this off again. Sorry, guys. That's all good. Once again, my work my workbench is uh, completely covered <laughs> with crap everywhere okay so uh there's the vtx so we need to remove this thing Holy macro. I gotta tell you, this is jigsaw puzzle, man. <laughs> and we gotta take this out again. And that washer is gonna fall. There it is. And I need to replace these standoffs on the bottom. If you'll excuse me, I will be right back. I'm going to go get an X driver so I don't have to use my needle nose on these. Okay, he's back. Bye. He's back. All right, so I got a little hex driver here, and we're going to. You see what I'm doing? Yeah. Well, everything just disappeared. There it is. So, this might be perfect. So, we got a little washer under that. So, we'll take the washer off the original. Put it on this one and go under here. And replace that. Oh, yeah. I think that's going to do it. This is like surgery, man. <laughs> Take this one off. Washer. You know, they say where there's a will, there's a way. And uh, I think I spent maybe when all the dust settled, a grand total of 50 bucks on all these different parts assortments from Amazon. Yeah. And I don't think I could be building these drones had I not had I not have all these little 
miscellaneous parts things here. Ed uh, actually asked where where you can get um, all the nuts, bolts, and washers and stuff. Amazon, they Amazon. have they there have all these different assortments. And what I ought to do is uh, I ought to just create a like like Joshua Bardwell has a, uh, yeah. a whole just set of links somewhere that yeah, yeah, yeah. all of these different things. You know, maybe I <clears throat> I do have an affiliate account, so maybe I'll actually make a dime in commission, you know? God oh, forbid. Yeah. God forbid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Mars. I don't do this for the money. You know, it'd be nice if I could make a little money at it, but right now it's yeah. it's all about spending money. <laughs> same oh. thing with Spike. Look at the money sp Spike. Yeah, same oh, here. Uh, same here, man. bitch. Same here. <laughs> man, he... It's putting together quite a setup there, though, isn't it? I don't want to even start adding up what I've spent on drones and FPV and computers. And oh, uh, yeah, but you know what? Are you gonna, you gonna take, can't take it with you, you know what I mean? Oh, well, yeah, all right. So, we'll save those, we'll save those pieces now. Let's see if this, if this isn't exactly, I mean, exactly what I needed. Even the, even the other screws should fit now. Let's see. It looks it looks like it's uh, it's higher. You know, where is it? I'm missing. Did I put them back in the in here? thought I had, I know I had at least three of those longer screws. Now I only have two of them. Did you take them, Mars? No. You didn't reach, reach <laughs> around the world and grab them? <laughs> and it's, it's hard to believe that you are clear on the other side of this planet from me. That, that never ceases, it just never ceases to make me wonder, you know, about the, yeah. uh, how amazing that is, <laughs> that you're actually on the other side of the planet. If I, yeah. if I were to look straight down at my feet, I would probably be looking pretty close to your direction. I'd be looking up and you'd be looking down. Right, right through the, no, you'd be looking down too, because, you know, down is relative. <laughs> well, there is, no, there is no upper down in outer space, you know. <laughs> actually, yeah, no, well, <laughs> you're right too. <laughs> I just realized you know, when, you're, when you're out there in outer space hanging upside down, it, it, it's not upside down to you. No. It, it, we, we've invented this north is up, south is down business, you know. <laughs> oh, that's too long. Oh, God, help me, help, help me, help me. It should come up, Ed, if you search M3 and M2, yeah. yeah. I can't, for the life of me, understand. I thought I had the thing all mounted already. With, 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 with I had found all the screws, and now did it fall on the floor? Uh, if it did, it, I, I think there's a whole wealth of screws buried in this carpet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, that's uh, let's let the the. the the idea is to see if that works with this uh, with this frame, if it clears now, and I do have enough room, and I don't need another washer. So let's let's see. M three nuts or bolted maybe. What's that? It's asking there has to be more to the search than just M3. Oh, there's the screw. I found no, it. it was sorted or something. I found the screw. It was right here in front of me. Okay. So there's that. And let's put another, put another screw in here. And I just need to get in there and see if, um, if it looks like I want to be shortened against any of the capacitors. 
on the flight controller board. So that, that's how that goes. That goes in there like that. And the board is mounted. Woo, that's close. Wow. I got room for... I got room for another washer. Oh, man. It's, it's just... I'm looking at the clearance right here right up here see where i'm pointing that's that screw oh yeah in the frame looking at that clearance and it is whoa less than, less than a millimeter then i'm looking down here at the bottom right down you can't see it but i'm looking at a capacitor on the bottom of this flight controller that is coming really close to this metal edge and i think the answer i think the answer is is fairly is fairly simple and i think that that answer is going to be to just take see these see the edge can you see what i'm looking at here yeah and bevel just yeah chop that corner off and chop that corner off in an uh, uh, yeah, yeah. and that'll give me plenty of clearance for the capacitor yeah so let me take these out again and i think that 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 would be an absolutely perfect fit obviously i can't put the vtx on top of this stack <laughs> right yeah. obviously the vtx isn't going to go on the top of this stack but let me get this let me get wiggle this thing out of here again you know, I was trying to be cute wrapping the wires around. I would have been better off just soldering them right in from the outside like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, it is what it is. Then again, then again, the wires going the way they are with that frame, it kind of protects them. Yeah, I'm not going to take it apart. No. Any, anyway, that's for sure. So uh, I need to take this all apart now. Take this side plate off. You know, for a hundred bucks, this was a nice little drone, though. I mean, it did have everything. Yeah. And I, I know you've. Uh, Hold on a second here. I, I know you guys have uh, have seen this monster, which is the uh, the Tyro the one twenty nine the Tyro one twenty nine one twenty nine. That's a seven inch seven inch quad with. Uh, with every, I mean, it's it, it, it comes with the GPS module and everything. Well, baby, love you. They were 129 bucks for everything. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, isn't that wild? And then, and then the baby, <laughs> this is the Tyro 79. 79, yeah, and that, that's look at the difference in size. <laughs> unreal isn't it yeah but this has got that same silly frame business see yeah, it's, yeah. it's even smaller than the other one <laughs> yeah but this is, this is this is a fun flying little quad since after i went ahead and replaced the camera and the motors on it you know remember i had the, the motors were terrible they vibrated so much that it was awful. The, the, oh. the picture was, you couldn't even see the picture. It was shaking so bad, you know? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it was, it was, I mean, it was, it was really unbelievable. How are we doing? People hanging in here? We've got nine people yeah. yet? Yeah, people are still in, yeah. Wow. Drone shots, EBR, Ed. Good, good. Hey, why not? You know, it's it's a build, but it's it's, it's what what's the difference between this and just one of the normal live streams where people just hang out and talk? Same well, difference. Yeah. Except I'm busy. All right. Uh, so at any rate, that 
that is something I got to do. I got to go just grind the uh, grind the ends off of that. Take these two pieces all apart, and uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go ahead, Mars. You want to keep them entertained? I'll put yeah. some. I'll put some video on here if you can watch it. It'll take me five minutes, and then I'll be right back. So let me. Uh, yeah. What do we want to watch here? We want to watch. Uh, uh, ah, here I've shown you all this before, but you can, you can, you can watch some model, some model jet stuff. Okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so you can watch that, and I will be back in five minutes. Beast. I know, aren't they ABR? They're freaking huge antennas. They're massive. And that thing's moving. There's that antenna. <laughs> G'day, Bob. Mitch will be back in a minute. A couple minutes, Bob is going to grind down a frame for the quad that he's building. A boat landing, a boat landing. <laughs> Ah, look, the skull on the tail. <laughs> Looks cool. Thank you. 
Uh, what's Mitch building? Uh, Frank and Quad. Ooh, ooh. Saved it. Didn't tip it. All right. He's back. Uh, who are you talking to, Mars? Uh, Bob Casey asked uh, what you're doing. I told him that you're riding down the frame and you're building a Franken quad. A Franken, yes. It's, it is It is becoming a Franken quad. Anyway, uh Let's get back to my background there. And here's what I did. Uh, oh, not, yeah. Let me show you on the other on the other table here. Um, hang on a second and I'll show you what I did and we'll see if it works. Okay, so if you can see. right here yeah i just beveled i beveled that in just a little bit on yeah. both sides here yeah. and here so hopefully now we'll give you the clearance here that'll clear cameras up here this goes in like that around the wires and get it down in place oh yeah major improvement all right so that'll clear that now as far as the wires for the vtx which is where we started here with this nonsense remember yeah the vtx has gone about back about back here and the wires have to go over to here so these are these wires actually be long enough all right yep they'll be long enough there you go yep let me see how the solder how they look solder joints yeah they're soldered through so they look pretty good so let me untwist these and uh untwist the pattern <clears throat> And twist them all together into one one little wire like that okay so you know having this thing sit up there out in the open is not the best idea but <clears throat> it's going to be behind this big this bump here should be all right yeah with a tie wrap, probably some foam, some foam tape underneath it, and a tie wrap on top. So I probably, you know, I don't want to. I could heat shrink the whole mess, but then you got, you know, it's got, it's got these things get hot, and there's no sense uh, containing all that heat in the heat shrink. Yeah. So what we have here, we 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 decided that it was these four here, and let me go pull up that uh, wiring diagram again here and blow it up and the VTX went that's the wrong diagram it is <laughs> the other one, let me let me delete that one right off my screen here. And this is the one we need right here. And it. it was right here, if I'm not mistaken, right there. Nine volts ground TX3 in video. So we this is fun being both the both the technician 
and and the producer here pushing all the buttons, you know. <laughs> you know, I, I I watch I watch Greg Greg show Oz by Drone. Yeah. And and I I love I love it. I just love it. He he's whereas I am a rank amateur at this and don't care if anybody knows it. He uh he says, I'll ask my producer to do this. <laughs> yeah. And I'm saying to myself, how come I don't have a producer? Uh, yeah, his, daughter, kind of his, daughter does, his daughter does um, all the button pushing and that. Yeah, I need a producer. I need to have somebody behind the buttons, you know, <laughs> instead of me so they can. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? It's faded in and faded out and just where it's supposed to be. Now, these wires, well, I really got these wires short. But I think that it's going to, uh, I think it's going to make it. Let's see. This goes this about here. This come up through. It may be a, it may be a little short there. This comes up through. No, I think that'll be all right. I think that'll be exactly right. Worst comes to worst, I'll have to put new wires on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think that these are going to be just the right length. So we'll. Strip them. This stuff is is 30 gauge wire. Did you know that? These little little skinny wires are, are 30 gauge. And tinum. Can you see what I'm 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 yeah. in picture? Yeah. Because my monitors are all over to the left of me, and I have to kind of crank my head around to see what's going on, which I try to keep an eye on. And the green. Whoops. Okay. So... Looking at the wiring diagram, the first one is red and black. Nine volts is the square one. So let's tin these up. Okay, and let's see, I think we're going to do it this way. So the red is first. Double check. Nine volts is first. And the black is second. And the third one is TX3, which is the green. I you could go blind doing this. Sure. Green and yellow. Here we are. 
Uh, I'll let you take a look at that. Zoom the camera out a bit. Oh, oh. I want to give you the. I want to give you the. Let me give you the show here. See him? Ah, there it is. Beautiful. And the VTX will just sit up there, hopefully. <laughs> God, that's really, really just tight, not, it? it's just not quite enough wire unless I put it up there sideways like this. I may have to make those wires a little bit longer. But we'll What's see. That? We'll see nothing, when it comes to it. Nothing wrong with having it the other way around, is there? Depends on where the antenna plugs in and how I can tie it down. It's got one of those tiny little connectors that you really oh, right. to get okay. tie wrapped in place. Yeah, I think that'll be all right. It'll probably go right right out outside and around the frame. But that's on there. The camera's on there. So we got camera. We got VTX. We have... Uh, Receiver, it's the only thing left to solder on. So, and after we get the receiver on, we can plug it all up and fire it all up and see if everything works. Okay. Now, this receiver is one I think that I've already used. Then I replaced it because it's in a scotch tape container. So I think that, yeah. Oh, look how short the wires are on that puppy. <laughs> but that's okay. Don't need long wires because the receiver is basically just going to sit right on top of the board like this. Yeah. So yeah. let's see where the receiver goes back over to here. And let's find the receiver. Receiver, crossfire main. Here it is. RSXR. So it's right here next to the bind button, next to the boot button. Yeah. S bus, five volts ground, and I need UART. I need a UART for the. Uh, it's. TX, I said you are at six for the telemetry, didn't I? Yeah. So I need to find you are six. There's RX3, RX6 is here. So the TX6 is way over here. Holy mackerel. And the and this is way over here. I could remap this PPM pin to uh no, nah, I'm not going to bother. So you can remap these pins in Betaflight. I don't know if you knew that or not, Mars. No. Yes, no. sir. You can go in there and remap all the resources you want. You can, I can say, you know, the pin that said TX6, forget that. Go ahead and map TX6 to whatever the pin yeah. number in the resource list is. But um, to keep it obvious for look down the road if I ever go in there and look at it and try to figure out what the hell I did. I'm going to uh, I'm going to just uh, solder well, you, could, you, you could forget it and you put the wire to it and it's not the right thing because you've changed it in better flight or whatever. Yeah, so let me see here. So we had uh, next to the boot button, which is here. Oh, it, those are actually labeled. Five volts is the one in the middle with the, uh, okay. So we have uh, S bus, five volts in ground with the PPM in the middle. So next to the boot button is the S bus. So let me, let me go ahead and <clears throat> tin these up. That's the S bus right there. And this is five volts. Yeah. And that is ground. Okay. And then TX6. Third one in. Is over on this back row here. TX3. 
think it's the oh, third one. TX6, yeah. Okay, yeah. TX6 is right. I can always read it on the board. But I'm going to take a look anyway. RX6, we got, it's the fourth one from the end. One, two, three, four. TX6. And that sends the telemetry to the free sky receiver. Okay. Fourth or third? Fourth. Fourth. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at the... Uh, I'm looking right over here. Oh, There's, sorry, I'll, I was looking at RX6. Yeah, the TX6 goes to the RX6 on the receiver. Oh, yeah. that's where I got because I. Yeah, I you always. That's six. very confusing, but it, it, yeah. it's something that you always have to remember is that TX on one device always goes to the RX on the other device. Yeah, that's why I thought I'd say something because I could have sworn it was the third one in, but. Yeah, that's nah, all good. <laughs> yeah. And I've made that mistake more times than I will admit, ever admit. <laughs> Hooking them up backwards. Not because I don't know that RX always goes to TX and vice versa, but because it, you get confused sometimes. Yeah, yeah. All right. Strip these wires. Yellow. Now, let's see which one of these is S bus on the receiver. Is it the yellow or the green? <laughs> yeah. So what I need is I need an RSXR wiring diagram. Well, if you hook the other three up, <laughs> you've got your answer. No, but I don't know if the yellow or the green is S bus. See, one of them is S bus and the other is S port. So oh, I yeah, need, I I need to do, diagram S port. I need, yeah. to get the, I need to get the pin out. <coughs> On this, but first thing I want to do is <clears throat> is tin them over here. Get 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 a little solder on these wires. Okay, so. Now we need to find some S RSXR documentation. So let's see. We will go and type in here FRSKY. Here I will bring you along for the search. And R dash XSR. Okay, RSXR. Let's see if we can. Hit the images up and see if there's a wiring diagram. And there's a wire. There is a wiring diagram right there. And what I have here is the pin and the first one is round is black plus five volts. S port is the yellow. And the S bus out is the green. Okay, so the green goes to S bus, the yellow goes to the telemetry. That makes sense? Yeah. Oh, what happened to my camera? There we go. Okay, so let's go over here to uh, and see if, but if, yeah, I can fit, yeah, I can fit all this in. So let's go ahead and solder. What did I say? I said the yellow goes to telemetry. Uh, black, red. S port is the third one. Yellow is telemetry. Green and is S bus. The last one is green, let's, yeah. Let's go ahead and just tack that yellow one here. And then 
we'll come over here and tack the S bus is the green one. Yep. The Well, thanks for hanging in there with me here, Mars. Oh, I'm enjoying watching the build. Yeah, it's nice because I don't have to talk to myself, you know? Yeah, that too. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I can engage myself. Sometimes it's the only intelligent conversation I have all day with myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so long as you don't start answering yourself back, you're all good. <laughs> you can talk to yourself. So you start answering that you got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Tidy little things here, aren't they? Small. Uh, oh, perfect. Okay, so there's the receiver all hooked up, and that's great because I can just take and and double sticky yeah. that right to here, and that's that. And then these antenna wires will I'll do it this way, and these antenna wires will come out, and run along the leg, and run out on a tie wrap. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we'll bring these two antenna wires out. We will take and put this right in the center towards the front of the quad. I will take a tiny little piece of this uh, of this double-sided foam here. Put that under here. Am I going to need two pieces of this? Hard to say. It's got that big connector on it. Let's see if, it, if, if there's anything there for it to stick to. Okay. And we will take and we will stick this right on top of the board. Like that. Beautiful. Now, I need, two, I need a double double layer of it there. Got that big connector. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That should do the trick. Yeah, as long as it's yeah, it should it should clear that. Uh, so we'll put this right here, like this, right on there. There. Yeah. Oh, so how neat is that, huh? How neat is that? Am I going to be able to? Yep. Man. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So we got everything hooked up now. And uh, what I need to do is I need, I got the receiver. I need to plug the camera in. RDFPV just joined the chat. Oh, how you doing, my friend? Thanks for coming by. Keep me company. So we'll plug the camera in. All right. Take the lens cap off. We need the uh, antenna pigtail for the uh, video transmitter. We'll snap that on. God, I hate these. I hate these tight, these little connectors. Yeah. But uh, we'll tie wrap it to something to make sure it stays on there. I like the bigger ones better. So I'll make sure that's on before I turn it on. And let me go grab an antenna to put on there. Now let me see which is is this an SMA or an RP SMA? You know the difference, Mars? Uh, isn't it the the pin goes the other way around? Right. Now this is a this is an RP. This has got That's this needs the, the, the hole, so I need an antenna with the pin in it. 
So the uh, uh, the RP, RP, I think, is it that what you said is the female end. So SMA has got the pin that will be the male end. Yeah, that's just a straight SMA where the pin is in the antenna. Yeah. The RP SMA has the pin in the uh, as the pin in the uh, socket in the female side. So that's put an antenna on this thing. There we go. So we do have an antenna. It is connected. We get rid of some of these tools here. Carlos is back. Pardon me? Carlos is back. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, you can come in if you want, Carlos. I'll bring you back in. Just woke up. Coffee time, he said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, oh, you know what I forgot? How, how silly am I? Here I am looking up pictures and diagrams, and they give you this uh, this thing with it, this little circuit board cover kind of thing that yeah. has all the pinouts printed on it. <laughs> oh, no way. <laughs> I, and I know that because I've used this board God knows how many times, but you can just hold it right <laughs> You can just hold it right up there and see what <laughs> TX6, TX6 and oh man, look at that ground. That'll be right. <laughs> ground and five volt and S bus. And over here we have video TX3 ground and nine volt. Perfect. All right. Uh, cool. Well, let me, let's let's came in, sure, double check. <laughs> make sure it's correct. Okay. So we the battery now we bring out this a little monitor yeah and what, and what i'll do is uh just for fun i'll set it up over here and let's turn it on and go to this camera here and see if i can get it in the picture there it is light out of the way can you see can you see that no, yeah i can see the it monitor in there yeah there we are okay and now moment of truth guys We fire it up, and I'm still going to use the smoke protector, <laughs> the smoke saver. And see what happens. Let's go and find the channel. Do a channel search. Well, okay. Found something. There's the camera. Hi. Yep. <laughs> that Cadex Rattel is a tremendous look. How, look, I don't know if you can see how how good that picture is. Yeah, it looks good. National Sarcastic Society. It says on my shirt, like like we need your support. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, there's there's the VTX and the camera working. Cool. Okay, so that works. And uh, whoa, that VTX is getting hot. So let's uh, let's shut it down for right now. And uh, let's see what what channel did it find? It found a seven. But what I need to do right now is I need to go in and hook it up to the uh, so it's all working. Receiver needs to be bound. It's blinking. Yeah. 
but uh, don't tell me I stuck the buying button on the bottom. Uh, oh. You're a genius, Mitch. <laughs> I'm just going to have to. No, the buying button's on the top somewhere. Where the hell is that tiny little buying button? Oh, I hate buying buttons. They're so small. Where is it? Oh, there it is. It is on the bottom. It's right over there next to the. You should try to find it on this little thing, Mitch. Who is this ever small? That's got to be it. Nothing else looks like it. Mitch? Yeah? On this, the little tiny walk. No, no. Wow. The bind button is like... Um, Man, it's even smaller than a bee's, you know what? <laughs> I've got this fine button down underneath a uh, a pretty thick piece of shrink wrap. I should be able to push it through, through the shrink wrap with my fingernail. We'll give it a try. All right, let's get the radio going here. we got the radio here. Take, the, take that and put it out of the way and turn it off for the time being. And uh, get the radio turned on. Welcome to Orca TX. You got to connect the battery while you're holding the buy button. Yeah. Which is like a, you need at least three hands. Oh, yeah, I know. All right. So that is a Franken quad. I got that set up. We'll go in here to... Uh, Page, and we'll go up to bind telemetry on. There it goes. There's that sound that you know and love, Mars. Yep. And now we take and try to hold this in. God, this has got the smallest little bind button on here. I don't know if I, I can't even tell if I'm, I can't feel it. I can't actually feel it clicking. You know what I mean? Yeah. I may end up having to cut. Oh, there it goes. I got it. Okay. Got, it. got a green light. It's a good sign. Okay. So let's turn it out of bind. Off. And plug it back in. I got, a, I got a green light. Okay. And uh, I got a blue light on it. And I don't know, this 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 thing, I, 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 I may or may not be in the right mode. But let's, just for grins, go to the telemetry page. Uh, Arco just joined the chat too. Who did? Uh, Art? Art. I don't see, oh, I'm out at the bottom of the chat. That's why. Artco. Hey, how you doing, my friend? Oh, it's Carlos is back. Here you are. All right, Carlos, how you doing? Hello. Hey, Carlos. Right. Sorry I'm to keep refreshed. You, didn't mean to keep, refreshed. Keep you hanging. I heard all the excitement here. <laughs> I, got the, I got the radio bound, but uh, that was pretty quick. Let's see. Special funk telemetry. Discover new sensors. Now, so far, it's only got RSSI and RxBet, so didn't find any other sensors. So I may or may not have that. We'll worry about that later. In the meantime, we do have a receiver, and uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to uh, going to unplug. The battery and power it lost. and power it from oh it was getting telemetry because it says yeah. telemetry lost so that's a good sign okay um yeah. Yeah. and plug in the uh usb see if that powers the receiver 
Yeah, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't. But it is bound. Oh, that's true. Right. Actually, all, all I need to turn the radio back on. There you go. All my whoops, except for the the latest one I got, they all work straight off of um off USB to better fly. But the latest one I got, the Project Mockingbird, you have to have the battery hooked up, otherwise it won't connect the better fly. Oh and my. the switch is back to front, Mitch. Doesn't yeah. it? What? My switch is back to front. The, my, my mode switch. So I usually put it on switch B, and angle is up, horizon's middle, and down the bottom is acro towards yourself. Yep. And everything that I've bought, all my better quads and that, they're even the Tiny Warp Nano, it's all the same when you go in better flight. But with the Project uh, Project Mockingbird, it's the other way around. Oh, no so, kidding. Uh -oh. You know, in better flight, when you press like arm, it starts okay. on, on. All right, on let's give me. I'm going to interrupt you here because I'm, I don't want to keep this thing on and let that. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, sorry, Mitch. It was a lot it's too hot. What'd you say? He says, do your thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So what I did is I've, I've gotten myself here into, uh, Hot into water. Beta flight again. And you, and you see my little quad doing backy flips there behind yep. me. That means that the channel mapping is wrong. And I look up here and I see A E T R. And what I need is T A E R. Yeah. So I'm going to change that first. Mm -hmm. T A E R and hit save and the quad should stop flipping. Okay, now I should actually be able to fly the quad with my sticks. There's roll, pitch, yaw. <laughs> You'll come back now. And throttle. Okay. Beauty. And aux one, aux two, aux three is the beeper, and yeah. aux four is flip over after crash. Yeah. Now, I don't. I don't need the the RSSI is already coming in from telemetry, and I don't see the RSSI coming in on any of these channels. So I don't think I I don't think I need that. <laughs> I think I have that. Yeah, I've noticed on some of mine too that's disabled, and some it's enabled. Well, it depends if you have if you flash your receiver with the latest firmware that actually transmits the RSSI on either you know one of the aux channels. Yeah. Then you'll see that channel down here yeah, moving usually around, and cool. whatever channel that is, you go up top well, here and say RSSI channel or whatever it happens to be. But I don't, have, one I don't one of mine sit on one of mine sit on channel 12. I can't remember which one though. So now I'm gonna set the modes up. And uh the yeah, first mode is gonna be to arm. So I say add range, I hit the switch I want to use to arm, and it automatically picks aux one. Yep. And I want it to arm when it's up at the top here. And I watch yep. this little little yellow thing. Oh, oh, that's right. Then I usually go to uh, angle mode. Yep. And I want that on aux 2. And I want that down here. See, mine, mine is the other way around. See yeah. that little yellow I thing? I don't want it that way. I want angle, horizon, acro. That's right. Right. Yeah. That's how I've set all mine up. Right. But with the Project Mockingbird, it's the, the little thing starts on the right hand side and goes to the left mid. Well, then you can go into your into your uh, transmitter and reverse that channel and it'll turn it around. How, how do you do? That's what I don't know how to do. <laughs> you go into the mixer and just reverse the channel. Just look it up in look it up online. How do I reverse the channel on a very, very very simple to do? When you reverse it, it'll make the switch do exactly well, the opposite that it does now. Yeah, because I remember I've seen a video on it somewhere. It, like, I know you can reverse the switch, but I just can't find the video. I'll find it. I'll find okay, it. so here you go. Now we have uh, horizon mode and yep. the acro mode is here. Now, along with acro mode, I always I turn on air mode. So yep. I want to make sure I get that turned on when aux 2 is yep. in the acro position. And that's yep. another thing. that I've, I've actually, when I hooked it up, like it's from, obviously, Please. from factory. Air, uh, not air mode. So FPV angle mix. Is added as well. You can do that. I don't like that though. Yeah, I don't know what it's about, but it came with the. It, act it actually gives you, as you use the yaw, it gives you. It, you can mix in a little bit of roll at the same oh, time. Okay. All right. Um, now, 
studies. All right, beeper. Sweet. I need beeper here, which is F3. I'll pull that up, and I want that to beep when it gets up to here. F3. There you go. Uh -huh. And I want my turtle mode flip over after crash. Where is that? Flip over after crash. Flip. I want to know why you need stability in Horizon. Well, I, I for testing, or if I ever get in trouble or something, and get disoriented, you know, you, you, or the, or the video signal goes out on me, you know, it just disappears completely, and I don't have a, a, a GPS rescue. I can mm. let go of everything, throw it in an angle mode, and give it a little power, yeah. and the thing will level itself and start going up. Yeah, it, it, you know, you have to be thinking on your feet to do that, but. Yeah. All right. So turtle mode is here, aux four, and turtle mode is here like this that's turtle mode okay now i want to go and save all of these okay and i want to for the time being i want to unpower the quad so i don't burn up my my radio now okay so now done with my radio i want to go in and i want to set the vtx so that it i want to set the channel so i'm going to go into uh the command line interface i want to type in the commands get vtx and this gets me all the commands that have vtx in. i have vtx band equals four vtx channel equals one VTX power equals one, low power disarm equals off. So what I want to do is I, I, I like to fly on uh, F3. So I think that's band four. This band four is F, and then band five is R, the race band. And hey, we'll try that. Band four. A uh, bus can. What channel am I using? Three. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to say, because I can change this in uh, any time I want, I can change it in uh, smart audio. But I want to, I want to uh, go uh, and cut this and put it here in the, in the command. And I want to put the word set in front of it. Set VTX channel equals three. And the band, I'll leave it for. I say enter. Then I want to set my power to, uh, so I'll say set. And I want my power. This thing has is a maximum of like 350 milliwatts. So I'm going to set it to four. So I'm going to say, I'm going to cut that, paste it here, say VTX power equals four, enter. Then I want it to go back to low power when I disarm it. Okay. So I say set. Low power disarm equals on. Enter. So I got VTX low power arm, VTX power set to four, VTX channel set to three. The band was already. So let me just look at the commands again. Get VTX. I have uh, band is four, channel is three, power is four, <coughs> disarm equals on. Super. That I type save because if you don't type save, none of this makes any difference. Hmm, hmm. Oh, you have to type save, not hit the tab. Okay, it says saving, but did it save it, or is it, or did I just just lock it up? It just locked up for some reason. Probably all the U USB. So let's see. Ah, I hate that. Let's try it again. Let's open it up again. Unplug this. Plug it back in. I may connect. Oh shit. I gotta <laughs> I gotta update this. All right, go to CLI, say get BTX, and it remembered it. I have uh, band equals four, channel three, VTX power equals four, VTX disarm equals one. Pit mode zero. Half duplex equals zero. Okay, so success. Success. Yeah. Let me get back to Halloween here. All right. So who's here? We got twelve people here now. So let me see who's here. We got Darwin Digital. How you doing, man? I hope you're enjoying me fiddling around with all this stuff. Art Code <laughs> is here. 
Artco. RDF. Uh, Art's here. And uh, who's his back from the sky guy? He's uh, a knucklehead. Oh, Bob Casey. Hey, Bob. How are you? Thanks for coming in, man. RD, EBR. Everybody's got initials. Um, Bob Casey, that's about it. That's unless I go back at Mars. Mars is here, obviously. All right. So now I have uh, drone pool. Love my drones. I have um, I'll unplug it from the. Uh, let me disconnect it from Beta Flight and unplug it from here. And it appears that I have everything. Drone shots. Ah, come on. There we go. It appears that I can put this receiver, stick it back down there. There we go. And its antennas are out there. And there's the VTX. So I'm not going to plug it in until I replug this antenna in. But for the time being, I'm taking it off to get it out of the way. We've got a camera. And it appears that <laughs> everything I'm, is working. Darwin Digital Rights. It's great to watch, even though I'm lost. I kind of can't wait for that. <laughs> I, 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 don't tell. I might be a little lost, too. Don't tell anybody. Although I think I think it's starting. To, it's actually starting to starting to come together, and it seems it seems to work. Uh, and now what we need to do is we need to start putting this silly frame on there. So let's start with uh, let's start with this side plate, and the front is this way. That's the big end. So we want this to come out here. And that, that that's pretty there. solid looking. What's that? Looks pretty solid. It is. It's very solid, but it's just not a lot. There's just not a lot of room here for, for all this stuff. Get these wires around this. There we go. And get some screws. Can you see? Is it? Yeah, yeah, you're on. Okay. Yeah. So we'll put this. They're calling you Professor Mitch out there. Well, <laughs> you know, I'm no Joshua Bardwell yet, but, uh, and but I know a lot of shit that he doesn't know, too. Maybe not about drones, but, <laughs> <laughs> but about a lot of other stuff, man. <laughs> Darwin Digital says, DJI, for me, charge and go. Yeah, but this is fun. This is what hobbying, this is what hobbying stuff, hobbying stuff is about. That's right. Yeah. Well, look, if you think about it, it's it's not really that hard. I mean, how hard is it to attach three wires, realistically? Like that, that's fairly simple, three, or four wires, maybe. So one component's got four wires, right? You put it on, next component, three wires, put that on. Yeah, it, it really, it really well, is. It's, it's pretty not, basic. It's, it's just frustrating not. if you don't know where to solder them. But then you get a diagram. Follow the diagram. It's it's fairly straightforward. Right. Don't tell me that this uh, that this is going to give me grief too. These stupid side plates. Because I always like like you, Carl. I was always terrified of that kind of stuff. Like you know, crap yourself wires. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You know, your camera's got three wires. It can't be that hard, you know what I mean? Two of them are, are your power wires. you got one more. Or you might have a second wire after that. It's pretty basic. Like, it's not that hard, you know what I mean? Easy well, for you to say. There is, there is something to it, Mark. Don't, don't, don't make it sound too simple or everybody be doing it. And then, yeah. nobody, then nobody yeah. watching me do it. Oh, no, it, it, it does get complicated. <laughs> but look... Uh, <laughs> to take three wires is not that difficult, realistically. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> Tell that to the guy that's trying to get up, get five pounds of crap in a three pound can here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know man. some uh, women that dress that this way. Thing here <laughs> also is, is is actually that board is. Well, the best way to do it is to start with a massive quad five inch, obviously. You get your, you know, you get your act together with that, and then yeah, you know what you're doing on a three inch. That's for sure. I agree with Bob Casey. It's very tedious. It is. Yeah. Well, so is oil painting and golf, but you know. It <laughs> yeah. 
Diazepam. That's a fancy yeah, word for uh, Valium. When you, sit down, <laughs> when you sit down and start doing stuff like this, you look up and the next thing you know, four or five hours went by. So it does it does keep you occupied. I mean, it really, oh, yeah. it really does. It keeps you occupied. And that's the, that's the purpose of a hobby, especially when you're retired like me. Is to, uh, man, it's like just, I like that form of money, uh, Brent. Brent Dariel says, for a half a cup of rice, you get a Chinese kid to come over and do it. <laughs> but don't be cheap. Not a half a cup. Give him a whole cup. Come on. <laughs> so, uh, man, this this is another part. <coughs> stupid side plate here uh -oh. is this <laughs> controller board is just physically a little bigger than the one that came on this frame in the first place. That was a surprise. You can do it. So I'm, I'm <laughs> probably going to have to end up cutting some of this out too. Uh Oh, can you, uh, can you mute us when you take the Dremel out in the garage there? <laughs> <laughs> I am going to have to, I'm going to have to modify these carbon fiber side plates a little bit what time is it getting to be 5 30 okay well i think that uh this is stuff that i may have to do kind of off camera and just fi finish this thing up um no way no how huh yeah well you know i'd have to i i have to go out there and, and Spend some more time finding it, filing and grinding. And I Good. think that uh, this from here on out, it's just going to be um, cramming around and fiddling around and everything. So I think what I what I'll do is call it a, a build here. End of part it, one. It part is two build. coming maybe. soon. Well, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe I'll just uh, get the pieces ready, make sure they fit and come in. But it is, for all intents and purposes, it's a drone. Uh, everything is everything is all the electronics are mounted and wired. The uh, controllers in the motors run in the right direction. Uh, the only thing left to actually finish this thing up is to put the center frame together, throw some props on it, and it, it should uh, send it as they say and send it. Send I think what, I, what I think I might do just just for fun is take the radio and see if if everything works like everything does what it's supposed to do. That is a rat tail camera, Jeffrey, Jeffrey style. Okay, so I'm gonna plug the. I'm gonna plug. Don't plug in now, antenna. Oops, you're right. Thank you. Good, good call. Good call. It would be a good thing that I have a couple extra VTXs laying around. Yeah. All right. First things I learned: never plug in if that antenna. Yeah, I, know, I, I know. I know better too. But yeah. The goggles doesn't matter, but on the receiver, oh yeah. And why is that, Mars? No, receivers don't matter because it's only transmitters that are putting out putting out power. Yeah, it'll it'll blow up the thing. These little, these little, these little press-on connectors are so lame. They sh they're supposed to snap on, but Mars, you saved the day. Well. In, in the disarmed mode, this is in low power, so it might not have burned it up. What, what a, yeah. It might right. have been. It's, it's, what it's, antenna it's, is that? I've seen uh, it before. Uh, what is, antenna is that, Mitch? I don't know the name of it. It's just a generic. Gotcha. Generic antenna. Boy, this is, uh, this is so... Easy, a little tiny connector that you snap it on, and it, and it, it hardly even feels like it's snapped. And that is a Rattel camera, right? You said that in the beginning. A what? A Rattel camera? Yeah, yeah Rattel. Yeah. Oh man, I might, I might end up switching the VTX out. This, this is such a, such a weak deal. It's like the uh, spring. I'm Go on top and slip back or something. Well, no, you gotta you push it on and it just barely any any anything any force on it just pops it right off. Pops it off, yeah. I I think I wonder if I have another another one of these. Excuse me for one second. Let me just go take it for it. 
Take Might as well sing for us. Oh wait a minute! Here you go. You know what? I have a, uh, I have a little, a little uh, antenna here. Instead of messing with this whole thing, this is a, a this whole deal is just is a whole antenna. See? Oh, I pole. Yeah. I pole. Yeah. Yeah. I even knew that. Which, mm -hmm. probably, which is something I probably end up using on this quad because this quad is, and that snaps on there. Okay, so we do have an antenna on there now. All right. So let's plug it in. I got blinkies. Hey, wait. Jeffrey made a point, but I'm going to ask him a question. Uh-oh, the old guy's here. Anyway, he says, uh, I hate those connectors. I always hot glue them after they snap on. But doesn't that heat up? It does heat up, yeah. That, that's the problem with hot glue. I What I do is I once I mount the board and mount that thing, I tie wrap it so it can't go anywhere. Just dropped in to hey, show. All right, so here's what we got. Some we, got beeper. That. we got beeper. Hear That's it? my antenna with the like some glue stuff that they put on it. Let me turn on. Let me turn on the. Uh... Hello, Lloyd. Lloyd joined us the chat. Oh, hey, Lloyd. How you doing? Let me turn on the thing and put it on the side camera here, and see if we can't see and set this to the to the frequency that I think it's supposed to be set to, which is F three. <laughs> he's, he's on his third nap. I think he's going to go get his nap. <laughs> This is nap number All three. All right, there we go, guys. We have. <laughs> can you see? It? We have image. Can you see the image? It's yeah. All right. Now, it's if something. I if I arm it, the motors are spinning. Got camera. Here I am, upside down, and uh, I'm trying to see if it goes into high power mode. It does. It's blinking. Two, three, four. Yep, four blinks. When I disarm it, it stops blinking. So oh, it's blinking once, so it's in power level one. That's great. That's working. Uh, it appears, guys that we have a quad. Nice. Right. You unplug the battery. Beautiful. Now all I got to do is just get that silly get that silly center center section mounted on there and we're in business. Mitch got all the motors running before Jeff. So yeah, I had I had all the I had all the motors running and we made sure, made sure they were running in the right direction. Yeah. So I, I I'm sorry I couldn't get it actually all buttoned up with props on it for you guys, but I do have to take this out and I do have to cut out, uh, where are you? A, a, a certain, a certain yeah. amount of this to clear the, uh, to clear the board. And I can't mount the cat, the camera mounts to the inside of these things here. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that, but it is, uh, and I'm just going to use, I think I'm just going to use that little dipole antenna on there instead of this thing i mean i don't i don't plan on flying this any anywhere long range or anything it's just basically just something to go up and your parking lot and rest, yeah just just beat the shit out of it you know not worry and not worry about it because uh worse i mean the only thing that that's of any real value well the motors are okay but the, the flight controller you know 40 i paid like 40 bucks for it so not that big a deal so that's it and we did that in only four hours, no, three hours, three hours and 40 minutes. <laughs> wow. Okay. Let me come back over here and visit for a few minutes. Well, we got 14 people in here. We could turn, let's turn this into a live stream guys. <laughs> hell with, hell with, well, hell with building. <laughs> come on in here, Lloyd, get your butt in here. He's ready to take his like third nap. I think. No, oh, man. <laughs> For a young kid like Lloyd is, he's sleeping <laughs> way too much. You know? <laughs> uh, uh, who else is here? Jeff. Jeff Style. Jeff Styles. Jeff Styles. Brent Ariels. Darwin Digital. Original, yeah. You mean the original Tyro 99? <laughs> Jeff, yeah. It's Bob Casey. It's got uh, it's got a better camera on it. It's got better motors on it. It's got a better flight. In fact, the only thing that that remains of the original 
is is that frame. And the only reason that is is because I <clears throat> didn't like that frame, and I ended up building a uh, I ended up building a, a a a drone where I took most of the components from that and put it in a new one. I should have just t not done that, left the Tyro ninety nine like it was, and put all these components. But I enjoy building and rebuilding and it's, it's part of the hobby. It keeps me busy. Ah, so let's see. Let me get rid of beta flight here. I'm sure I have a lot of tweaking left to do on this thing, but I think that uh, covered most of it. Uh, Nomad Horizons sent me a, an email here and I'm about to get back into FPV. Need your feedback and experience on the FPV. People are asking me for my expertise now. Oh, <laughs> they got a wrong number, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Let's see what we're doing here. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much for the invite. Oh, I, I, I know. That's okay. That's okay. Lloyd. Yeah, EBR. Hey, EBR, I, I need to start flying this thing. I don't know if you saw this is the uh, the Tyro 129, that seven inch thing, and uh, for a hundred, uh, they actually they were 129, and I had a 10 percent coupon at Banggood, and I bought two of them. I I still have one of these in a box, unbuilt, 115 bucks. Can you imagine? It's got a Cadex camera in it. What motors? It's it's got the tw it it's the uh, Ishin motors, you know, they're they're okay. They run, they fly. Mm -hmm. They're not too bad. It, they're twenty five oh seven, eighteen hundred kV for a four cell. So because it's bigger, uh, the, the, a bigger prop, they're turn they're going to turn slower. Whereas normally in a four S quad, when you saw an eighteen hundred kV motor, you're thinking success. But on a seven inch quad, eighteen hundred is more suited to four S because of the size of the props. But it's not bad. Comes with it actually comes with the GPS module on it uh, as part of the as part of the 115 bucks. It's got uh, it's got a SD card slot in the flight controller for your black box if you want to record it. It's got uh, a fairly uh, 800 milliwatt uh, VTX with the big connector on it, the right size, the right connector, the one that uh, doesn't fall off all the time, and uh, you know, for 115 bucks, that's without the receiver. I put an R9 in it, so you can see it's got the uh, it's got the T antenna there. Did yeah. you get that antenna up, yourself? Up top. Did I what? That antenna. Did it come with it? No, it doesn't come with the receiver. The antenna? Oh, this antenna came with the video transmitter antenna. Oh, it did. Oh, okay, but not the receiver. You know. When mm -hmm. you buy a receiver, it comes, it comes, the receiver always comes with the antenna. The antenna doesn't come with the quad. They don't know what kind of receiver you're putting in unless you buy a plug and play job or bind them fly or whatever they call it. Anyway, that's uh, I need to, another quad I need to start flying, but uh, what are you going to do? Just so much time. Oh man. Quarter to six, just finished Thanksgiving turkey dinner. That's right. It's Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving up in Canada. Yeah. How you doing, Gary? Glad to see you. Who else we got here? Did I miss anybody? There was RDFPV, Bob Casey, Artco. Artco. Uh, who else was here? Darwin Digital. And... Who else? I just built the Tyra 129. But you, oh, you put it all on an iFlight X i7 frame. Love my Jones. Ed was here earlier. So you, you took all the guts out of the Tyro 129 and put it in an iFlight frame. Well, but it's, you said here you get vibrations in your GoPro video. But not on the camera. Not from your FP. Boy, that's unusual, isn't it? Yeah. Is, 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 uh, that's really strange. Joe C is still here. Oh, okay. Hey, Joe. Um, that's strange. Uh, usually it's the other way around. <laughs> usually with GoPro has stabilization, it usually uh, usually cuts that out and keeps it uh, still. Keeps it better. Yeah. Here, let me bring you guys in here on a more even keel. Uh oh. There you go. Scary. Yeah. 
All right. I look better from far. So, Marge, did you do a live stream today? Uh, uh, he saved uh, himself just for you. I'll another <laughs> another eight hours. I did my stream and then I was on Spike stream till he finished and basically went to bed after that. And wow, how long did how long did Spike go yesterday? Uh, six seven hours something like that. Oh, wow. I. Don't know. I went on there and I left at about 10.30. I think it was about 10.30 our time here, which would have been 10.30 your time uh, or his time. Yeah. Only I'm at night and he's in the morning. Um, and that was like three at three and a half hours into the stream when I left. So you mean he he, he did for another, another three hours. hours? Well, you know how he said he wasn't going to play music? <laughs> <laughs> he ended up playing music. He, did he say? I didn't hear him say that. Yeah, I, I, I had a gut feeling he was going to do it. <laughs> well, you know, I went, I went on to uh, at seven o'clock. What I, what I generally find myself doing now is, is I like art. I like to jump in and <clears throat> on Art's deal, yeah. give him a little support. So oh, that's right. We started out with Art. Yeah, so they both start out at the same time. But what happens yeah. lately? Spike has been having technical difficulties right at the beginning. Uh, yeah. Well, also, he doesn't have a, a time limit anymore. Yeah. So what happens is he doesn't get started until 730. And then he doesn't bring anybody in Another until at least 8 o'clock. So <clears throat> I usually stick with Art and then jump out of Art and go over there about the time Spike's talking about sending out the links. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I think they ought to give all of us watch time. When we go on somebody else's stream, <laughs> I think we ought to get watch time too. Half credit. Guys, yeah. if that was true, Carlos, you'd have more watch time than all of us put together. Maybe. But I really don't. Yeah. No, you, you like it. Carlos has got nothing on me. What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, Lloyd. 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 Lloyd says I'm putting him to sleep. <laughs> Look, it even got too much for me. I used to be on all my 24 hours around the clock. I'm always on this freaking thing, and it just got too much. I had to I had to take a break myself. I had to admit to myself, hey, you know, pull your head in. You're just, just way too much, mate. I mean, it's nice to support, but you just can't support everyone and kind of had I usually support the, I support the old guys. I try to help yeah. them. I'm like a cane. <laughs> yeah. I, um, yeah, well, look. I don't support the bigger channels so much because, well, they don't really need it. They're, they're huge channels anyway. Yeah, they all need it. I, I get that. But, you know, it's uh, I come across the, the not-so-big channels, go in and support them, get their numbers up, get a bit of watch time up, and that's it. I like yeah. more that you can have fun also. Yeah, and that too. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> exactly Roy's right. making fun of me. The sound effects. Yeah, I, I don't think he. I think he's being very sarcastic. And it's only a t-shirt. You know that I, I, am a charter member. I like that shirt of the National Sarcastic Society. Where Where did you get that? I could I could use a shirt like that. Like, we, like, we, like we need your support. <laughs> <laughs> My son. My son knows me. He buys me these shirts. He bought me one and it says, sarcasm is like punching somebody in the face only with words. <laughs> there we go. That's, much, yeah. That's kind of true. Can yeah. be. And, and I, I get, you know, I wear these things out in public and I get this shirt. This shirt gets me sarcasm everywhere I go. It's funny. I People see the shirt and and they and and as a you know as a joke they they start acting sarcastic to me. <laughs> Don't take the rest of the day off. Yeah, but uh, now let's see what well, we got. Something going on on my cell phone here. Somebody's doing something. Drone worship. JBL oh, go you. review. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I think I can't do that right now because I'm I'm on I'm on the air. Ah, so you like my Thanksgiving theme, guys? 
Uh, it's more of a Halloween theme, no? That's what I mean. Halloween. That's what, that's what I said. Halloween. You know, yeah. Get punchy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, yeah, my Halloween theme. I thought that. I thought the, uh, the. I like the spooky character under the time guy with the cigar. He's spooky looking. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, I showed you earlier the uh, the thumbnail that I that I did for this with uh, I got a Frankenstein there. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Lloyd, you're a pisser, mate. I didn't <laughs> slap you. I high five your face. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. What did Lloyd say? <laughs> I didn't slap you. I high fived your face. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Better than a <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. pump pound or whatever they call that i'm surprised art hasn't popped in here art usually pops in on on some of these things where are you art you still here he's collecting his four little uh ken heron dolls so he can get on he's packing them so he can go to, <laughs> go to spin <laughs> yeah that, next weekend friday saturday yeah, it is it is a week from yesterday saturday. in fact by uh, by by this time today art will probably be home already either that or be on a plane I yeah. think he said he's actually leaving six o'clock Sunday, Sunday morning. Sunday morning, yeah. Today is Sunday, right? Yes, sir. Okay, I lose track. Well, you know, when you're retired, you do lose track. In fact, I I yeah, have you noticed time going faster at all. Like when you get old, as you, the older you get, the faster you perceive time. Yes, that's a it's a fact. That is. It seems like to me. And it's going to get worse. I mean, time flies so fast. I don't know where the hell it goes anymore. <clears throat> when you were a kid, remember you were a kid in the third grade. Yeah, in the third grade, and waiting for summer, the next, waiting for summer vacation. Oh, that even the next bell to ring. Never, rain. never got there. You know, you summer wait, vacation. wait, wait. Summer vacation never oh, comes. Ready to draw the car. <laughs> it, I'm a very young. It, I, time is going quick, and I'm not necessarily doing anything that it goes quick. It just no, it does. It, it, it it's uh, <clears throat> you know, all of a sudden it's uh, Zoom. middle of October. And the next thing we know, it'll be New Year. Then it'll be next summer again. And uh, time flies. But uh, can you see the VTX power settings with use, use. DGI air unit um, Arctic? You can go into a menu in the DJI goggles and and see what they what it's set to. You only have two choices. You have twenty five and seven hundred. So, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, you can see it does not show up on the on the OSD. Uh, Jeff, thanks for coming in, guy. Appreciate it. Appreciate the input and the support and uh, putting up with my boring building. I hope. Uh, but educational. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe you know, even if it, I watch some of these things and that I know maybe ninety nine percent of what people are doing, and then pick up one little thing. Yeah. God, I didn't know that. And, and it makes it makes it because nobody can know it all. Not even Joshua Bardwell. Mm. Uh, even though his chat, his website is FPV know it all. Uh, <laughs> it is. I mean, I'm not joking. That's the name is FPV oh, know it all is his website, but uh, uh, nobody can, can, can know, know everything in this. And okay. if, if you pick up one little trick, um, uh, then it was then it was worthwhile. Plus, it's fun to hang out, and everybody does live streams. So I'm figure while we're doing live streams, I, not everybody does four or five hours, six hours, except the Australians. The Australians, the Aussies, like these long live streams. Spike and Mars, I couldn't believe you the other day, Mars. Mars doesn't sleep all day. You all day <laughs> long. I kept you know I was looking. What's on YouTube? Boom, Mars is still going. And uh, <clears throat> well, it's just one of his first times. Also, he's trying out stuff, right, Mars? Yeah, yeah. I'll, well, yeah, yeah. I've done it before, but I've deleted the videos. Everybody's <laughs> leaving us. But, Boy, uh, yeah. France leaving. They're leaving, but the yeah, numbers going up. I don't get it. Oh, it went down to fifteen. Like, okay. Yeah. Plus, I'm going to be mixing it up as well. That first one that I've done. Grumpy that. Trev is here. My 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 man, Grumpy Trev. Oh, grumpy, you know Trev. grumpy Trev. Do you know? You guys know who Grumpy Trev, Grumpy Trev is? Yeah, no. I know Grumpy Trev. You know, you know, 
Good day, Stu. You A V, you know who that is, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, that's when, he goes out, when he goes out to the field to fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got long range Tony and Grumpy Trev. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that's Grumpy Trev. And I've I of course always gravitate towards older, older drone guys. Have so you ever seen the uh the controller he uses? No. The transmitter. It's a little, it looks like uh FR Sky one. He doesn't use the regular uh, QX7 or the... Oh, you mean the one that looks like a game controller? Similar, yeah. Has a controller. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me give Trev... Trev, welcome, man. Thanks for stopping by, and let me give you... Uh, make, you a, drone a wrench, make you a moderator like the rest of the guys. You, unfortunately, we're, we're pretty much done building what we were going to build, and uh, it's, it's, it's... I'll show you what it is. It's, it's, it's an old... It's an old uh, uh, Should do full screen. Nine okay. frame, uh, and I just I got started putting the frame. Everything's built and wired up, and I got started putting the frame sides on, and found out that the uh, that the stack I got in it is just a little bigger than the stack that was in it. So I need to take the side plates out to the shop and do a little grinding on them. But other than that, it, it it's done, and I built a I call it a Franken quad. It's a bunch of junk that I had just laying around. <clears throat> which was not really junk, but it was sitting in the drawer, Cadex Retel camera, an HGLRC VTX, uh, a Mambo F4 uh, uh, 405 flight stack, uh, some Emacs uh, Eco motors, and uh, I just, you know how it is, just threw it together, something to, as a beater to go out there and not worry about. It doesn't have all the DJI stuff on it. It doesn't have all the expensive components and GPSs and lost yeah, and all that. So that was what's what today was all about was uh, uh, kind of the exact opposite of, of the Armiton Marmot with the DJI system that I built the last time. Yeah, I could probably um, meet Grumpy down at um, the Nationals this Sunday for us, but we're not going because of Perth. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I reckon Grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Trev. Yeah, Trev says it looks pretty ugly. Well, it's, it's ugly because it's got all the shit just hanging off of it right now. I mean, it, it's it's got the, the problem with that Tyro ninety nine. I'm sure you had your hands on one or two of them. Is the uh, the uh, frame on the damn thing is so small, so small uh, that there's just not room. I've got to strap the damn VTX up on top of the thing. Let it ride. Let it ride up there on in the breeze, but, uh, you know, to go out there, it's analog and, and, uh, I don't have to worry about $179 worth of air unit and camera getting busted up. I just to do a little more aggressive flying stuff. I don't normally do, you know, uh, do flight kind of, simulator flying. Yeah. Flight simulator kind of flying. Well, I'm actually very happy. Grumpy Trev came in because I just grabbed his channel. Oh yeah, I, I I keep up with I keep up with those guys. I I enjoy. Uh, oh, I I to get to his channel. Well, last year Christmas, I was supposed to get around to his channel, but I got sidetracked with some other video and another one and another one and another one, and then mate, I just totally forgot about him. Sorry, Trip, <laughs> but I do watch you. <laughs> yeah, and, and I uh, uh, I got the biggest oh, charge at, at, at a Trev's uh, <clears throat> astonishment. At the DJI FPV system, <laughs> unbelievable, yeah, I know. yeah, and 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 Stu too. It was a that was a great video. That was one of the best videos he's made in a long time. Where they wouldn't let him have it. He 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 was itching to fly it, and they kept hogging it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it 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 really is. Uh, it really is a. Uh, uh, it really is worthwhile. It really well, is hundred worthwhile. kilometers away, man. Grumpy trip. Was the, yeah. um, I think he's from down Geelong Way, and we're in Melbourne. It's two different cities, so. But um, yeah, my missus is from Geelong, born and bred. So, in fact, when when I bought, you know, because I, I wear glasses that have a. Prism correction prescription in them. I cannot wear diopters and goggles. <clears throat> unless I had the diopters specifically made to my prescription, which would require probably someplace in Europe. It's a pain in the ass. So regular goggles don't work for me. 
the deciding factor on the DJI was when I found out I could wear them on top of my regular glasses. And, and I see in those things just super. But because of that, I mean, because I, I when I started with the analog, uh, I got the Vipers. And one yeah. of the and one of the reasons that 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 I got the Vipers with confidence was these guys was Trev and, and Stu over there when they yeah. did their review of them. They uh, <clears throat> they did a very positive review. Oh, basically, yeah. said it was the first box goggles that they had. Oh, that was the shit, okay. You know. Yeah. So. Uh, he uses the X-Lite controller also. That's yeah. Awesome. But he used yeah. something before that. It had a little screen. Oh, was that that, oh, what the hell's the name of that? Fly Sky. It might have been. Collaboration thing. What the hell's it called? The one that oh. never went anywhere. Yeah, they're a big controller. got the screen in the middle, yeah? Yeah. Not too big, but I mean, it more like an X-Lite style with a screen. Yeah, it fell out. You know so. what? I keep looking at all these different transmitters they come out with and... I said, you know, you know what? I, I got this old, this S QX seven S and it does everything I needed to do. So it's, it. it's good enough. Works great. Nirvana. With the, with the module. With the R9. Okay. That's what it was. Yeah. Got the R nine in the back, which is the long range. So people keep saying to me, <clears throat> you need to get crossfire. You need to get crossfire. But you know what? This thing is, is fine. I don't fly this stuff that far uh, far enough away to get anywhere near the range in this receiver. You could turn that, you can crank that thing up to one watt. Fly as far as you want to walk. Yeah. Now, I, I'll tell you what I ordered today. Remember I was talking about that Sonic model binary airplane? Oh, you, you mentioned you wanted an airplane. Yeah. Twin? yeah. Let me show you here. Hold on a second. This thing. Because I want to build an FPV airplane for cruising. Uh, hey, can I interrupt for one second? I just want to say something to Trev. Go right ahead. Mm, you turn me on. Oh, <laughs> I, that didn't come from here. It wasn't, it wasn't from here. Sorry, I resist. <laughs> Trust me, that didn't come out of my sound effects machine. <laughs> this <laughs> comes out of my sound effects machine. <laughs> comes out of my sound effects machine and definitely that there you go you know <laughs> but this uh this uh here let me uh let me see if i could if i can find some Why, <laughs> you the one when when uh you crash your whatever what's that mars when you crash uh i'm sorry when you uh turn the beeper on does yours say your whatever Good question. I think I just heard it. No, no, not not if I use it on the eighty-five X. This uh, TX. This thing here. See that? See it? See the picture? Yeah, right up there. Right. Nice. That's uh, that's, that's the like a twelve passenger real jet plane. Yeah, twelve. <clears throat> it's got about a engine a four foot wingspan. It's twin engine. Got the light kit with it and the landing gear, and uh, you can mount all kinds of FPV stuff right up here in the front. It's got a huge amount of room. You you can put a uh, Eagle Tree Vector uh, flight controller in it, or 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 uh, My INAP, what state, or what state, INAP. Are what state are you in, Mars? Trev wants to know. Uh, what Mel state? Victoria, Melbourne, Trev. And I'm in Florida, yeah. Melbourne. Because that that switch, I haven't put sounds on it on the better. Oh, okay. Only on me, all them sounds are just hooked up to the me better sixty five S. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, when I hit the beeper, it just beeps. That's all it does. Mine so says anyway, you're I've, at. I've <laughs> got to go through all all my models and put sounds, and I just did it with the first whoop that I got because I was all excited to put amber sounds on me Tyrannus and like. Chris's fault, you know that it was Chris MD95. Yeah, it's all his fault. Trev, but, uh, Trev says he's right up the road from you, just up the road. Oh really? I thought you was. I thought you were down Geelong Way, Trev. Sorry. I well, you ought to you ought to head out there when those guys fly. They're always out there flying. I'm, uh, I'm in the north, just near Epping Plaza, Trev. You'll know where that is. So if anybody, is there going to be any interest in this thing? I'm going to build this and put a, 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 a 
a hell of a nice flight controller, automated flight controller system. Be nice. Yeah, it's like most of these airplanes. It's that high density foam that uh, is terrifically. This stuff is tremendously durable. There's a uh, a guy's got a YouTube channel named Bonafide Pirate. Sure, okay. I thought so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Is Bonafide, it? Bonafide Pirate, and he does a lot of he, he mostly FPV fixed wing, yep. and uh, he's got some. He's got one of these, and he's got some tremendous videos. And he and the FPV camera on the front pans and tilts. Okay, oh, that's pretty cool. So. Do. As you're flying, you you pan it sideways, oh, and you can, you see that you see the left nacelle and the left and the engine, and yeah, yeah, everything yeah, going yeah. by going by you sideways, and it looks like you're sitting in the back of an airliner. It says, "Who was it? I don't know. It's it was cool it. as hell." Um, Kim Potato Jet. Who was it? Someone was flying a wind with that camera you're talking about. Well, you the camera is just mounted to a mount which has two servo. Oh. The, the count it's mounted. The whole mount is on top of one servo. That's the pan servo. Yeah. And then it's got another servo that tilts it up and down. Um, it's not that. gyro stabilized, but I, I would like to put one of the DJI FPV systems in this thing. That's yeah. the plan. Yeah. So it can record, uh, it can record the, the high, you know, the, the, the high def stuff. <clears throat> and I can get that view in the goggles as well. Uh, yeah. At 700 milliwatts, it might not have as long a range as these long range guys, uh, Bob Casey, do, uh, I don't know if you're going to do a uh, first flight vid on your uh, Franken quad. Oh, my. Oh, yeah, you know, I probably will throw something. <laughs> if it flies, I'm sure it'll fly, but uh, I'll probably have it finished. I'll finish it up tomorrow and uh, <clears throat> hopefully the weather holds out and I'll get a chance to fly it. Cool. But, you know, I miss the RC airplanes. The RC airplanes uh, are much more relaxing to me than the quads. It takes more effort. Mitch, I'm going to go. I'm going to try to eat some food while the yeah, wife is going to shut here. this thing down here in a couple Take minutes. Mars, everybody in the chat. And I'm well. Mm -hmm. Thursday, possibly, Mitch. But, uh, yeah, thanks for coming in. Thanks for helping me out and Have sticking with me during this. Uh, always well, appreciate Mars it. Mars did the dirty work today. More so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, man. Have a good night. And you have okay, a good day. Man. Be good. Take Thank it you. easy. See you next time. So, Mars, it's you and me. And you, Mitch. And two Melbourne. I think that. Uh, the two Melbourne are on the other opposite sides of the world. How crazy is yeah, that? Yeah, like clear, clear, straight through the middle, man. Right through, right. And it's on. I, I tell you, it's still. I remember the days when when if i had to call somebody in the next city long distance it yeah. was a hassle you know when i was a kid you had to go there was you couldn't direct dial in you had to go through operators it was a pain in the ass you know oh, wow. how old i am but uh, <laughs> now we come on here we get get six people all in the same room scattered all over the face of the globe with imperceptible delay yeah, yeah. i mean there's very little latency well, in this like, chat of ours we um we had black and white tally because i was born 71 so started off with black and white tally color telephone with the dial then push button so, <laughs> yeah, just before that uh trev says two cans and a string yeah yeah i i had where I, when i grew up in philadelphia there was a uh, one of my friends lived directly across the driveway that ran between there was like two rows of houses with a driveway in, in between. And he, his bedroom, my, my, my buddy's bedroom was right directly across from my bedroom window. So damn, if we didn't stretch a string, <laughs> we actually had, we act honest to God, we had two tin cans and a string and we talked to, we talked to each other. Uh, it uh, yeah. And it worked. It wasn't high fidelity. It no. certainly wasn't 4k, but don't be digital. You know THX, but we could hear, we could understand each other with the, with yeah, the, I've done that as a kid the too. two strings and the, the string and the two tin cans. So, done that. yeah, at uh, you were born in seventy one, huh? Yeah. Damn. In nineteen seventy, Mitch is so old he had smoke signals in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> when I was when I was uh, in nineteen seventy one, I was already married. 
I had a one-year-old kid Ooh. already in 1971. So you basically are about the same age as my son. He was born in 1970. Same, yeah. Yeah. April, I'm an Aries. So yeah. yeah, he was born in November, <clears throat> November of uh, 70. So he's about six months so old. Not that far apart, a few months. No, yeah. not at all. Not at all. He's dreading the big 5-0 coming up here pretty soon. Uh, yeah, that's what I tell my kids too, mate. Because I've got two years and then you can officially call me old. Until then, don't mention that word old. <laughs> Carlos is. Carlos is gone, but not forgotten, man. He's insulting me one after another, you know. <laughs> when I was your age, we didn't have phones. <laughs> when I was your age, we had to walk miles to school. Oh, In the snow, that. uphill both ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, well, yeah, I've heard lots of stories of um, my parents walking, you know, well, pretty much not to school, but just walking wherever they had to through <laughs> snow and that and you know, i've never experienced any of that kind of thing like i've walked to school but we don't get snow where we are so i mean it gets cold but that's the worst it is for us here in australia well in melbourne anyway in the city where i am it just doesn't snow here in the mountains you get snow but that's that's different so that's yeah yeah, yeah i've yeah. never been i've only been to the snow once mitch it's called a place called lake mountain really you know, like, all, all of about that much snow, like just, just oh man. So I've actually never, 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 ever been to the snow, or like, I've seen snow because it, it snowed here once, and that was all of just a blanket at the ground, and that's it. And that's very like that happens probably once every hundred years or something. Like the weather gets that, wow. yeah, it doesn't happen often. Well, lunch. it doesn't happen here. It doesn't happen here in Florida. Uh, <clears throat> one time yeah. since I've been in Florida, I moved to Florida in, in about the time you were born, right? 1971. And yeah. uh, <clears throat> we had one one in Tampa. It actually snowed once and deposited it's a rare thing. The snow on the highways. There was 200 traffic accidents on the interstate. They had to close. People yeah. didn't know what to do. I mean, they had to close the interstate. Uh, <laughs> Cold white shit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I grew up up. See, I grew up in the north. Oh, you know, you know? We had snow. I mean, you know, our biggest thing when I was a kid was: is it did it snow? Is school closed? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, about. The, we've only, like I said, here in Melbourne, only once I remember in the eighties it snowed. It's never snowed ever since then, and that was like a big thing. Everyone was outside, and you know, trying to make snowmen and this. Like, you know, want to be Americans because <laughs> you don't get to stay here, full stop, you know, like it just doesn't happen. So, yeah, yeah. it was a big thing for us and, yeah. But, I don't um, miss I like, I like to try snowboarding. I, like, obviously, you know, I love me bloody skateboards and stuff. So I reckon I'd do good on a skateboard. I'd be all right because I'm a very sporty type of person, you know. So I'd do all right at that kind of stuff. I'll leave that to you. Yeah. Well, I know there's going to be a broken arm or something somewhere, but <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's just I'm definitely of, too old. For, that's just I'm part definitely of too old for skateboards and and that kind of stuff. No, well, look, I'll tell you what. I'm. I wouldn't go and get on a normal skateboard, but them electric ones, oh, they're fantastic, Mitch. I'm telling you, just stand on it, put the throttle on, and yeah, just cruise along, and it's not like. I wouldn't consider it difficult. And that's honest to God. It's not difficult to ride an electric skate. It's harder to ride a normal skateboard than it is an electric one. Oh, I have no, I have no doubt that I could ride one. I mean, I ride motorcycles and bicycles, and yeah, I, I, you know, I can ice skate and roller skate and do all that kind of stuff. I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, worried about that. I just think that uh, uh, it, it would look, it, it would look kind of out of place, you know. <laughs> Oh, I agree, but that's what I like, like to see someone like because like people freak out when they see me. I mean, I'm no spring chicken either, and they see this forty year old guy on his skateboard going down the road. Like, what the hell? I've even had, even Kaz was saying because oh that guy, the guy he was looking in the like you know the side mirror, looking back at me because I was on an electric skateboard. So <laughs> I, see these people, I don't know why it's fascinating. Them. I love it. I reckon it's all it's, it's awesome. Uh, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave that to you. I'm gonna I'm gonna. Yeah. Uh, if if I ever get if that uh, Skydio two ever comes, mm. uh, and I'm like early, I I I should get the first batch. 
one yeah. of the first batch. So right. if I get it, first thing I'm going to do with it after I get, you know, get it figured out. So I'm going to jump on my motorcycle and head, head down to a really deserted stretch of beach down South of me where, it, where it's, it, it goes for miles and it's like, you know, just a couple hundred yards from the intercoastal waterway to the ocean. You're on a tall, skinny, narrow, you know, road and there's not much out there, but it's really pretty. And uh, chugging down that, you know, about 25, 30 miles an hour, chugging down that, playing with that, that, that thing would, would, would be would be interesting. And I've been, been wanting to do a drone and motorcycle thing, but as dangerous as it is to ride motorcycles these days with all these kids in their car, cell phones and, you know, distracted driving, mm. uh, you better be paying a thousand percent attention to your motorcycling oh, yeah, and yeah. not worrying about whether your drone is crashing into a power pole. So I'm hoping that this thing really well, is yeah. autonomous enough that I can have the confidence in it well, to turn well, it well, loose and not have to think about it. Yeah, I watched a video that they had the promo feeds and they showed the Mavic going and because there's branches, it stops. stops yeah. audio. Yeah, it just keeps going, mate. See, I like but if you're riding a motorcycle and you don't have somebody following you and you're trying to do it all by yourself and this and your drone ends up stopping at a tree six miles back, you can't be thinking about that stuff. You you no, you have to. Right. And I've never had the confidence in I, in in the uh, in in that drone's obstacle avoidance because it uses ultrasonic on the sides, you know what I mean? And it, it's just the the intelligence in that Skydio puts DJI to shame. And I would actually be yeah. really surprised if DJI has anything in the works even close to what they have there. You know, everybody says, "Oh, don't worry, DJI's already got it." I don't know. I don't know. That's pretty some pretty advanced stuff they have. They're gonna have something up their sleeve. They're holding off. They're still making money on all the sales on the Mavic and this and that. Well, they have shit hit the fan with their workers. That's gonna take a good year to repair. So I reckon 2020 is gonna be a pretty good year. There's got to be something coming out from their end. Yeah, I uh, uh, look. I like DJI. I I, I got all kinds of their stuff. I bought their FPV stuff. You can't knock the. No, I don't, I'm not crazy about their service. Uh, no, the service sucks from what and I. And I'm and one thing about Skydio, <clears throat> they're in the states here. Oh God. They got a they got a phone. They're not huge, and uh, hopefully, they will have something uh, akin to it's customer like, service. Like, service is fantastic. The others maybe not so good. Same thing. It's like dealing with Banggood, you know, Banggood, yeah. is a, I mean, it's great. They got uh, everything you need. Their prices are fantastic, but uh, what a pain, you know, you buy something, it doesn't tell you it's back. Oh, yeah. I ordered, I ordered some stuff the other day and it didn't say anything about it being back ordered. So I ordered it, I paid for it. And then when I looked at the expected ship date, it was November the 4th. I said, what the hell, you know? So yeah. now what am I going to do? Cancel the order? You ever try to cancel an order with them? You know, you got to go. <laughs> Unless there's a button there that says cancel. And the only time you ever see a cancel button is if uh, the expected ship date comes and goes. A little after that, you'll see, they'll give you an option to cancel. Otherwise, you got to e get on the, either email them or get on the live chat with them. I, I don't buy nothing without PayPal. Oh, I always use PayPal, but I mean, because even still, you still got to go through the drill with PayPal. I mean, that uh, have you ever PayPal tried to get your money back? They do all that for you. You just ring up. With, well, I've been in that situation. That's how I got. Oh, you can't see it, but my camera. That camera over there, the Canon. Yeah. Eight hundred dollar camera without the lens, but I got the lens at, with the package for eight hundred. And um, I got a full refund on that camera, thanks to eBay, because I thought it was the wrong camera, which I didn't actually know. What, what happened was I bought a Rebel SL2. It's supposed to say Rebel SL2 on the top left corner. When I got the camera, it says EOS 200D. I thought it was a different camera. I didn't know they were the same cameras. The one that says Rebel SL2 is only available in North America. But nowhere on their site where I bought it from states it's only available in North America. If I had known that, I would have, well, I would have known that I was going to get the other camera 
or I would have tried to get it through someone in America uh, because I really wanted the red writing on the camera. It's nothing much, but I like it for that. So, but the cameras are better they're, pictures with the red writing. No, no, I, I just wanted the red writing because it says red <laughs> on it, you know? and you know, I was kind of disappointed that it didn't say that. So, yeah, tried to email them, they wouldn't answer me. The, the handballing things backwards and forwards, made stuff. You straight onto PayPal. Listen, these people are mucking me around. I try to send them emails. They're handballing me backwards and forwards. I sent them pictures. They're asking for the same pictures. I just sent them to you. Didn't you receive them? No answer. So that's what I mean. Straight onto PayPal. I got mucked around. Doof, doof, waited two weeks. Thank yep. you. Back in my account. Yeah, either, either, either you use PayPal or you use a credit card that has good, like American Express or something that really takes care and, of it. Yeah, it depends on the credit card agency, I suppose. But we've got like uh, bank cards. They're a key card. Tap and go. The sort of like a credit card these days anyway. Like, and I, I use that via, like, through PayPal, but I wouldn't buy directly through my bank account without PayPal because if something goes wrong, there's you will not get your money back full stop. But Banggood, eventually you do get it back. I had actually had a shipment from them that got lost. Excuse me, I have a sneeze color. But my father used to say, nothing feels as good as a sneeze. It just clears yeah. your head. You know? um, I, 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 20-something dollars worth of little pieces of something. They shipped it. And it never, and it, and it, it, it never got picked up anywhere by any tracking and three weeks went by a month went by and there was no sign of it, you know? So took me four, four live chats with them. Yeah. And each live chat was a book in itself <clears throat> trying to get them to understand. And then they finally came back and told me that uh, it had been, it, 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 the words they used were it failed security, which meant that some custom somewhere kicked it back. Something was wrong with it, okay. but they said they had they had received it back and they were going to issue a refund. Oh, that's all right. So I said, "Hey, that's great." So I waited and two, three days, no refund. So four more times with live chats. Where's my refund? Going starting all over from start to finish because they, yeah. you know, with different people. And finally, you know, finally got my like twenty six dollars. Yeah. Uh, but. That's lucky because some some of them they know they know straight away. As soon as they don't see you pay with PayPal, I, I I just think that they're up to no good. I don't know why I think that way. I just think that they if you don't use PayPal, they're going to rip you off because there's no insurance. You can't track it. How are you going to? You can't. They're like forget about it, bitch. Like what am I going to do here in Australia? If someone overseas, you know what I mean. Like to track well, it. Well, it's the same thing here, Mars. Uh, when it's, international, when it's China we're dealing with, it makes yeah. it a lot tougher. And a lot of these credit card companies will, will simply tell you, uh, if, if, if you, you know, in their terms and conditions, they, they pretty well tell you, if it's international, don't come to us if you get screwed. Definitely. We can't we can't take the money back out no. of their accounts. We can't that's reverse right. these that's, transactions. That's what I'm scared of, just using Mikeka. That's why I always use PayPal. Look, PayPal puts a fee on it. But like I said, eight hundred dollars. Oh, I got a free camera for eight. And I got my money back, and I got to keep the camera. Like, what, <laughs> was, I gonna, what was I going to do? Like, I had the camera. It's not that I don't want it. That, that's you know what I mean. But if I had to return that and go through all that rigging, you know, all that mucking around, and then on top of that, them not sending me the money or sending it a year later, or you know, just no, no. <laughs> I mean, once, as they say. Bitten once, uh, yeah, twice shy. <laughs> well, Mars, I think I'm going to wrap it up, buddy. Yeah, all I right. I think we've been, I've been at this for says here four hours and 31 minutes. That's enough. My yeah. poor, my poor old voice <clears throat> hanging in there. Up, we did. We I accomplished, I think I accomplished. I would much rather have been able to just hold up a completed drone props and all, but uh, part two, it, it's close. Now, nah, it's close. I just have to go, uh, I, I want to make sure that frame is not shortened out on anything, but yeah. it's going to be a fun little quad. It's light, yeah, very yeah. light. It's got some pretty powerful motors on it. You know, yeah. it, it ought to be a uh, just a little fun flying thing. Uh, yeah. No, no high def or any 
cinematography, just a great camera that uh, that um, Cadex Rattel, I don't care what anybody says, of all the cameras I've seen, I've tried to run cams and <clears throat> that that is without a doubt the best picture on, on any of these things. So with that, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put on, turn up my music a little bit. There it is. Can we hear it? I think yeah. there's music there. I, I got these little speakers going. Here. Yeah, there we go. There's the music. Okay. That's how you guys are used to seeing me with the headphones on. <laughs> and I want to thank you. Anybody that's still hanging around, EBR, thanks for coming in. Darwin Digital, thanks a lot. I appreciate you. Uh, supporting me and putting up with me and my my ramblings and uh, hope you all enjoyed it maybe somebody learned something maybe not maybe i learned something who knows trev grumpy trev man good to see you i see i see a lot i watch a lot of videos with you in it so you're a star you're, you're to me you're a star man i don't know if you feel like one but uh, glad you came in glad you came in thanks uh, Thanks a lot. Say hi to Stu for me and uh, tell him tell him I mentioned him on my show. Tell him to stop by here sometime. Maybe he'll learn something from the old guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who else did I miss? Anybody yeah, well, that's still here? I'll bump into him. Hopefully uh, we've got a thing in November, Great Southern Drone Day. I'm hoping they come up for that. Be good. Jody, thanks. Uh, thanks for coming in, buddy. Always, always count on you. And uh, helping me out. And Mars, special thanks to you, buddy. Oh, Thank you, sir. For, uh, Anytime. For helping you and Carlos, too. Carlos, thanks you. If you're still there, thanks for coming in and helping me out. Uh, it's a lonely road, man, to do one of these things by yourself. And uh, yeah. uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate you coming in. So with that, I'm going to say goodbye to Mars. Take care, my friend. Whoops. Fly safe. Cut you off too soon. What was that? Fly hard, fly safe, everyone. There you go. Okay. You're done now. I don't want to be rude to you. All right. There he goes. <laughs> I felt so bad, man. I pulled him out. He was in the middle, mid-sentence. And I will tell everybody what time is it? 6.30 on Sunday afternoon here. Well, go ahead and take the rest of the day off, guys. Go play with your drones if you got them. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to my trusty sidekick spank the monkey and uh, let him say goodbye to you so with that if i don't see you before i'll see you thursday night 6 p.m eastern daylight time and uh <clears throat> hopefully by then we'll see how the old franken quad uh worked out so take care guys see you later